Welcome to Tailgate Week, fired up by Kingsford Charcoal. September 15th, the day USC had waited for. A day it wanted revenge and redemption against Stanford. The Trojans got neither. Caught by Zach Ertz, makes a great move to the five, dives to the end zone, touchdown, Cardinal! The Cardinal defense was dominating. It's running game, devastating. They were unstoppable. Blitz coming, steps up and he's sacked! Barkley steps up, he's hit again! Touchdown for Bob Taylor! 59 yard run! Stanford's gonna win the game! After toppling the Trojans, Stanford looks to take the next step in his quest for a Pac-12 title. Cardinal against Washington right now. Welcome to ESPN College Football Primetime, served by Applebee's tonight in one of the jewel cities of the Pacific Northwest, Seattle, where Washington is at its home away from home, Century Link Field playing their home games here this season while Husky Stadium is renovated. The eighth-ranked Stanford Cardinal coming in to take on the Huskies tonight. Stanford fresh off that victory against USC. Glad to have you with us on a perfect night in Seattle. Reese Davis, Jesse Palmer, and David Pollock here. Sam Steele's going to join us in just a little while. This is going to be the blackout of the century, they say. Washington wearing black, fans dressed in black, but it's been lights out when they played Stanford. Cardinal have dominated. No Andrew Luck, but it probably won't change things for Stanford. Stanford doesn't need Andrew Luck to win this game, and they do have a quarterback in Josh Nunes making his first career start on the road tonight in a hostile environment. But as we've seen in recent years, regardless of who's playing under center, this offense has an identity. They are going to run the football down your throat, and they can do it with a lot of unique personnel groupings. Here a few weeks back against Duke, six offensive linemen in the game. They explode off the ball. They have superior pad level at the point of attack. And Stephon Taylor, uh, Taylor able to rush into the end zone virtually untouched. Now, Washington's defense tonight, young and inexperienced. Josh Nunes does not have to throw the ball 50 times for Stanford to win. They got to run the football early, often, make this Washington defense submit. Keith Price is going, I'll take a few of those offensive linemen. I'll take a fullback. We don't have one of those guys on scholarship. Keith Price is going to have to do it all. When you look at Washington, the offensive line has been decimated with injuries. He's a little water bug. He can make people miss. And guess what? If he makes people miss, in the back end of Stanford's defense is where they're the most vulnerable. Buy some times, make some plays with his arms and his feet, his arm and his feet. He's going to be the reason if Washington can pull the upset. He's healthier than he was in the meeting a year ago. We expect to see him run more often. Keith Price and the Huskies trying for a little redemption of their own against Stanford when you come back to Seattle. ESPN College Football Primetime brought to you by Dove Men Plus Care. Be comfortable in your own skin. Best Western. Book now at bestwestern.com. And Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, the perfect combination of chocolate and peanut butter. College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. You've seen a lot of CenturyLink field over the last few days. Samantha Steele down in the corner of the end zone where MD Jennings and Golden Tate got together for that fiasco. Official scrutinized tonight. It'll be offensive linemen, Sam. That's right, Reese. As we learned right here in this corner, there's always pressure on the new guy. And there are a whole lot of new guys on this Washington offensive line. Four of five starters they lost since the beginning of fall camp. One guy in particular, though, you're going to want to keep an eye on tonight, and that is true freshman right guard Shane Brostick getting his first career start at that right guard position for Keith Price. David, you talked about it in the open that Keith has got to be able to make plays with his feet tonight. He does not have a whole lot of help up front. When I asked him yesterday how his offensive line was doing, he said, well, they're holding up. We will soon see. Yeah, Keith's been chased a little bit, and uh, Washington's going to kick off to start. Stanford won the toss, decided it would get the ball first, and why not with the way they've been able to run the football on Washington over the last couple of years. Sam mentioned first start for Shane Brostick. His dad, Byrne, was an All-American center here in the 80s. 
underway from Century Link Field. Travis Coons kicked it away, and Ty Montgomery coming out for the Cardinal. Good decision to bring it out. Without the touchback, picked up nine extra yards. Stanford will put it in play from the 34, and that's where we will see the man who succeeded Andrew Luck, Josh Nunes. Yeah, and he's a guy that hasn't made big numbers or put up big numbers yet, but he's made big plays when they needed it to against USC. Obviously, in the last game, it was a huge moment for him. But he has to become more consistent. This Washington team, they have to be able to run the football. But his play action, his development as a quarterback is going to be huge for this offense. First time starting on the road, David. But this is comforting. You can give the ball to Stephon Taylor. Taylor picks up about four on first down. Impact players for David Shaw's Cardinal. You've already seen Stephon Taylor, those terrific tight ends, Zach Ertz and Levine Toy Lolo on defense. We'll see the All-American Chase Thomas. Keep your eye tonight on both tight ends, Ertz and Toy Lolo, the best tight end tandem in the entire country. Davey mentioned they're going to run the football, try and set up big play action pass opportunities to those guys. They gave Taylor five on his first carry. Now they'll snap it directly to him. Stanford doesn't make it a big secret what it wants to do. They want to run the ball, pick up of a couple. You'll, you'll see a lot of different groupings, guys, with uh, big, giant, hulking guys coming in for the card. And how about this? Forget a quarterback. We're going all offensive linemen and a couple tight end. That's what you just saw from Stanford. They don't care. They're just going to pound you right in the face. This is an area of the field that the tight ends have to show up big. They'll play with multiple tight end packages on third down. I think the biggest area of concern for Stanford's offense up to this point has been converting these crucial down and distances. Zach Hurts lined up as a wide receiver, bottom of the screen. Nunes taking a shot, and he was looking for Ertz, and there was a little miscommunication between those two. So Stanford, you mentioned the problems on third down. We're in the top three in the country a year ago, and that is one area where the offense hasn't been nearly as good as last year. You see David Shaw looking at his quarterback. I love your decision. That's where we want to go. That's why we put Zach Ertz out there, but give him a better throw. I think it was overthrown by about 10 yards. Daniel Zeklenski will punt it away. For Washington, fair catch signaled it. You know, that could be construed as a major victory for the Huskies defense. Last year when these two teams played, Stanford scored on its first eight possessions, six of them touchdowns, and now the Huskies clad in black will get their start tonight, and Keith Price comes out. After Matt Barkley, Keith Price is the best quarterback in the Pac-12 conference. He's going to have to be accurate and make great decisions tonight under duress from the Stanford front seven that will get after him. Pistol look, run, and Bishop Sankey is hit in the backfield by Terrence Stevens. The impact players for the Huskies who are going to try to show a little tempo at times. Here are the guys for Washington, Austin Safarian Jenkins, a rising star at tight end. Casey Williams is the guy they'll try to get out on the edge. And Shaq Thompson, a do-everything guy on defense, the most highly recruited players in the country. Price with his first throw, fires just wide. It'll be third down and long. You're going to have to get the ball out well, quickly tonight with the kind of pressure he's And they're going to have to win on first and second down and generate yardage. You do not want to be in third and long situations against this defense where they can pin their ears back and get after you. Guys, USC was only one for 13 on third down two weeks ago. Not the best start right now for Washington. That's Henry Anderson. They're also going to have to get the ball to 88. This is their playmate right here in the middle. It's Austin Safari and Jenkins. Ryan held up for a second. Now Price having to use those feet and threw it into a little bit of traffic. Barry Browning coming up and trying to make the pick, and Henry Anderson was applying the pressure. You know, Stanford uses different personnel groupings on defense, too. Up front, they have what they call their magic package, where they bring in a bunch of different defensive ends. Henry Anderson, Ben Gardner, Chase Thomas, they line them all up. Trent Murphy coming up from in the middle as well, forcing Keith Price out of the pocket. Travis Coons, Terrell. Terrell signals for the fair catch. And Stanford will have it for the 
second time tonight. Stefan Taylor runs to come back. Back at Century Link Field in Seattle, Stanford and Washington each had the ball once. Both three and out. Now the Cardinal have it for the second time. Empty backfield with Nunes. It was Kelsey Young. He's lined up beside him at running back momentarily. Nunes fires incomplete. He was looking for Zach Ertz. It'll be second down and 10. It's going to be so important for Josh Nunes in his first start on the road to be able to communicate with his offensive linemen and his receivers in a very hostile environment. A lot of people think Century Link Field, the loudest stadium in the NFL, they do a lot of audibling at the line of scrimmage. You got to make sure everyone's on the same page. And just as important for Washington defensively to get second and tens and third and longs and keep Stanford out of that third and short situation where they're so deadly. And this to throw again. Montgomery has it. I will spun around. He's up close to midfield, and he'll have the first down, the first one of the night for either team. This is what Washington wants on defense. They don't want Josh Nunes throwing to tight ends. They want him to throw it outside to wide receivers. And Ty Montgomery just going to run an underneath route, but they feel their best matchups are on the perimeter of the field with superior quarterback play. Desmond Trufant, number six. got to keep an eye on tonight. One of the market corners in the country. Nunes has left the field, and... Kevin Hogan now in to take the snap. So Pep Hamilton showing us a few wrinkles. Third guy to take a snap tonight. Hogan keeps it. He gets into Washington territory, picks up a little over five. It's already not fun to play against Stanford and all the different shifts and motions. Now give them two weeks, a bye week before this game. Washington's probably out there going, what the heck are they going to do? We, we talked about the offensive lineman coming out the pack. Look, he's just smiling. He's like, yeah, that's right. That was a little, little wrinkle I threw in there. Just so hard to prepare for this, this Stanford offense. This guy right here, that, that, that's not the offensive coordinator at Stanford. That's the Andrew Luck director of offense. <laughs> Who works for the Bradford M. Freeman director of football, which is the head coach's team. Nunes is back, so is Stephon Taylor. And the Huskies are loaded up. They, they got gashed. 446 yards last year, and they took it personally. New defensive coordinator in Justin Wilcox, but they downplayed it when we talked to some of the guys, but that one stung a little I mean, bit look, last year. Look at these rushing yards in the last three years. I mean, that, that's generally not very good. They've been challenged not good, generally. since the bye week <laughs> to have low pack level and to get proper hand placement. They're going to load the box. They're going to be tested. Can they match the physicality of Stanford up front? I, I think what happened with Washington's strategy previously was to let them run until they got tired. <laughs> Third and short. Nunes. Take a shot. Ertz out there. Complete first down. Knocked out of bounds. Cardinal on the move. Stanford lulls you to sleep with the big personnel groupings and multiple tight ends on the field. Right when you think they're in an obvious run situation, they spring the play action pass on you. And there's Zach Ertz. So dynamic. Making a great play. And one of the guys on the outside, number six, Desmond Trufant, who's a really good player for Washington. He's got to make plays out there in the passing game, too. He's not going to sell out for the run as a corner, but Ertz just wide open out in the flats. Ertz caught what turned out to be the game winner against USC back on the 15th. And now in the red zone. Nunes firing toward the end zone, and Trufant had the coverage on Montgomery. I think tonight, guys, this is where Josh Nunes has to play his best football. He hasn't done a very good job with decision-making in the red zone this season. When throws aren't open downfield, you got to be able to check it down to your running back or run and get first downs to stay on the field. This is the best red zone offense in the country a year ago because of Andrew Luck's decision-making. They have not been very good this year. Right on cue, in comes the beef. Look at all the offensive <laughs> line in the ball game. Two fullbacks Power at the moment. Out. Give to Taylor. Burst through a hole and 
It's inside the 15. It'll bring up third down. You get used to seeing this, guys. These power run plays, these attitude run plays, they are body shots. They are trying to wear this defense down. They're going to pay dividends in the third and fourth quarter. These one and two and three yard games are going to turn into seven, eight, nine yard games like It's very easy. You got all the adrenaline early to come in there and take out a fullback. Once it gets in the third and fourth quarter, that shoulder looks a little bit better. Start dipping and leaning. See if Washington has a stop in him now. There's Levine Tori Lolo at the top. Nunes firing for Ertz. It's incomplete. And the Huskies force a fourth down. Shaq Thompson was on the coverage, the Valley Hood freshman from Sacramento. And now another problem for the Cardinal. Field goal kicking in the red zone. Jordan Williamson has missed his last four attempts. This one from 31 yards out. Williamson. Missed a couple late in the Fiesta Bowl, including what would have been the game winner. He's had his struggles early on this season from 31. He has a strong leg. David Shaw says all he has to do is do what he does in practice. And he does this time, and Shaw's team goes on top with a field goal. 3 0 to score, and now Shaw mentoring his young quarterback, the eighth ranked Cardinal, on the board with a field goal. ESPN College Football Primetime is served by Applebee's. Try the new Southwest Flavors 2 for $20 menu all season long. See you tomorrow. And in part by Wrangler. Nothing beats Wrangler comfort. Wrangler, real, comfortable jeans. Cooking up a few things for the game, and this is one of the great traditions at Washington. Sailgating rather than tailgating. That's taking a little bit of a hiatus because they're renovating Husky Stadium this year. UW playing its games here at Century Link Field. I tell you, you know, if you have to move out of your house for a while, how about moving in here temporarily to Seahawks home? This is a beautiful facility. Husky fans eager to get back to their traditional home and being able to float to the game. Marvin Hall, the freshman. That's the wrong way, Marvin. Uh, it's not high school Marvin, anymore. You can't just outrun him to the edge, partner. Two-time B team that went to the BCS Bowls now the last two years. Here's the renovation project that's going on over on campus at UW. It's a $250 million project. Athletic director Scott Woodward has it underway. They're expected to have it ready by the time the season starts next year. It's going to be an absolute palace. They're building a football operations center there. They're lowering the entire field. Won't be any obstructive view seats. It's, it's already one of the same places in college football. It'll be a great place to see a game. And it year. provides them true home field advantage. One of the toughest places to go into as a visiting team in a minute. The visitors here at Century Link with a 3-0 lead. Price getting it to his tight end. And that's what he needs to do. Got to get it. You mentioned it, David. Got to get it to Austin Safarian Chain. And if you look at Stanford defense, I don't want any part of their front seven. I want to try their back end five wide receivers the teams that have had success against Stanford the past couple of years Oklahoma State the Fiesta Bowl what do we see with Oregon yeah. spread them out play pitch and catch use your athletes in space you know, a lot of the bunch formations and trips from Washington in the early going Spits it out quickly. Casey Williams with his first catch, and the Huskies have a first down. Head coach Steve Sarkeesian also calling plays on offense, being very creative right now against this pass rush from Stanford. You're seeing the quick game, changing up the tempos, trying to keep Stanford on their heels. And the player down in the Cardinal. <laughs> uh, look at his number. Is Jordan Richards. The sophomore strong safety from Folsom, California. Remember, this is a Stanford secondary, very experienced heading into this year. They lost four seniors, three starters a season ago, including both starters at safety. That's a position that they're not so deep at right now with respect to experience. That'd be a big loss in this game. We've been very pleased with the way their safeties have played so far in Richards. Now made his way off the field. Here's the weekend menu brought to you by Applebee's. Big Ten starts conference play in order to kind of turn around and save face, perhaps. You'll see Ohio State, Michigan State, Wisconsin, and Nebraska on ABC. 
So we'll see Florida State and Alabama on ESPN, not against each other. I'm sure people would like to see that. <laughs> they might see that in <laughs> Miami in January. Got a ways to go, but they might. Price again, firing quickly. Jason Williams. Jason Williams showing some of that leaping ability that made him a high jump champion in high school. Yeah, they have a lot of talent on the perimeter of the field. He was considered by some people as the best high school prospect coming out of Skyline High School in here in Seattle. Pick up seven on first down. Thank you. Brown, Price keeping it. First down, Washington. First down, get down. They've got to keep Price healthy, move the change, hit the deck, and the Huskies. And we'll drive going here. And we know their front seven's great for Stanford. Don't block Chase Thomas every time. Read option off of him, which you just saw Keith Price do. Let him go. Don't have to block him. Don't have to waste a guy on him. Great job by Keith Price. Tempo again. Sankey has it. Bishop Sankey running tough, getting close to midfield. He'll just be a yard and a half or so short of a first down. Washington is not good enough to run the football conventionally against Stanford. They got to spread him out and give themselves their best chance. To take a shot. Only one yard to go. For first down. No. They run it. I'm not sure by getting up. First down marker. Healthy spot. Third and short. Healthy spot, Reese. That's Kendall Taylor. Very right healthy here. spot. And it's a really better spot than I anticipated. More up tempo now for Washington on offense. Playing very, very fast right now. And Taylor, a receiver by trade, but the two freshmen doing a little work in the backfield as a running back. He'll get it again. Slips a tackle. Shane Stove knocked him down. Maybe picked up one. Henry Anderson there, too. Sam, what do you have on Jordan Richards for Stanford safety? Yeah, Reese, I came over to this side to check it out, and it looked like it was his right shoulder. For a while there, it wasn't looking good, and then he got on the ground and started doing push-ups. Told his coach, <laughs> good to go. So I think he's all right. If you can do push-ups, you can play safety, I think. I'll check out that shoulder strength. Tony Horton would be proud somewhere. <laughs> Knocking out some push-ups in between during the game. Second down and nine. Inside the 45, it'll be third down for Washington. They're finding a lot of success right now in the zone read game. And as a result, it's setting up manageable third downs now. Where's the tight end, Austin Safarian Jenkins? That's a guy that has to be big on these downs right here. Now Price looking at the sideline, and Sark is making some adjustments. for a minute and Jason Williams just couldn't hang on fourth down and six coming you've got to be able to capitalize against this defense when you have opportunities you just have to make plays great job by Keith Price sees the blitz gets the ball out of his hands quickly that is a perfect throw hitting Jason Williams right on the two of his jersey that would have been a first down Tim Murphy jumped on it. Yeah. And it was the right call. It was incomplete. It was close. He got his he was close to holding it long enough. He had the thing secured, but the incomplete pass makes it fourth and six. And now Coons has problems with a snap and does a tremendous job just to get it out of there. How about, how about the ambidextrous <laughs> feet of <laughs> Travis Coons? It doesn't matter either foot. Travis said, hey, look, I got it out of there. What do you want? They've been very, Sanford, been very bad on third down this year. They're not off to a great start so far tonight. A miscommunication on their first third down. Nunes looking for his tight end, Zach Ertz. Later in the red zone, has Ertz working inside of the slot. Bad throw. They're going to have to get better now. Nunes has to settle down on his critical down and distance. Cardinal just one for three in the first quarter on third down. They do have a field goal and they're up three nothing. On first down, Nunes buying time, now running out of time, and knocked out of bounds. Good coverage in the secondary by the Huskies. Josh Nunes is the starter and won a quarterback competition this offseason because he gives this offense its best chance to operate. He can manage the running game, he can manage protections. We're going to have to see him do a little bit better job. This is a good decision. Nobody open downfield. Just take what you can get. 
Well, limit the damage. I disagree a little bit because you lost two yards. Throw the ball out of bounds. You're outside the pocket. As long as you throw it in front of the line of scrimmage, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a two-yard loss. You're in second and ten. Second and 12 as it is. Ty Montgomery has been a big part of the game plan early for the Cardinal. And he gets up close to the 20-yard line. It'll be third down and long. You got to like Washington's defensive effort up to this point right now. Yet another drive where they're setting up a third and long situation. Stanford, not the best passing team in the country. I mean, this is playing into your hands if you're Washington. Let's find out if they can generate a pass rush here. Something they've been very poor at early this year. Now the crowd, more than 50,000 strong, dressed in black, trying to bring a little noise and put some heat on Nunes and the Cardinal. Need five. Nunes taking a deep shot. Montgomery going up, and it is knocked away. An excellent defensive play by Washington. On the coverage was... Once again, Desmond Trufant. He said Washington wanted Stanford to throw outside to their wide receivers because that's where Washington's experience is on defense in the secondary level. We talked about Desmond Trufant early in this game, making a giant play there on a football that could have been caught by Montgomery. Oh, he did a great job. I mean, he, as, soon as, as soon as he caught the ball Montgomery, he fought for it and ripped it out. That was a great defensive play. It was a good throw, too. He just put his hand on it and might have given him an interception. I don't know what they might call. It's still a little mojo going on. He's just on trying in to get stadium. it out. He's just trying to get it out, Reese. I was making reference to the Seahawks Packers game. <laughs> <laughs> Stay with me, Davey. <laughs> it's early. <laughs> Stanford with a 3 0 way after the 32 yard punt. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Dover. Coverage starts on ESPN Sunday at 1 o'clock with NASCAR Sprint Cup Countdown. It's third race in the chase for the Cup. Jimmy Johnson is your points leader Sunday on ESPN. Coverage starts at 1 o'clock Eastern time. So now, after another good series by the Washington defense, the offense set up at its own 49-yard line. Price, and he does throw it away. Now, he's being evaluated by the referee, Terry Layton, as to whether he was out of the pocket when he threw that away and whether he had a receiver in the area. What makes Stanford so dangerous is not only how good they are with their starting unit, but they got a lot of depth as well. This is backup outside linebacker Alex Debniak on a stunt, coming inside, blitzing, getting pressure on Keith Price, forcing the throw away. Washington has no prayer of blocking Stanford unless he's, Keith Price is going to scramble or get the ball out of his hands fast. Well, it's right out of it, but skips it. Was looking for DeAndre Campbell. Ben Gardner might have gotten a finger on it. Well, you look at these two lines. This is the whole key to the game, whether Washington's offensive line can handle Stanford's defensive line. Nobody's been able to run on Stanford in the early going. Price going to try to throw on Jason Williams. Did he hold on? Yes, he did. A big play down the sideline right over Terrence Brown. A tremendous grab by the sophomore receiver. Washington again using tempo to their advantage on that play. Stanford's front four weren't ready to rush. They were late. And that allowed Keith Price to buy some time on a double move. And you see the track star, the jumper, true wow. sophomore. Jason Williams doing a nice job high pointing the football. And what look at the job getting that right foot down too, just before he's hit. Big time. Tremendous play by Casey Williams after he dropped the third down pass last series. He already has three catches for 48 yards, and now the Huskies are in the red zone. Yeah, I gotta say, when he catches that football, he kind of juggles it a little bit, and then his right foot doesn't touch again. His knee touches out of bounds. So I want to see where the ball is after the initial juggle. Because he does, he plucks it with his hands, but then the ball kind of shifts a little bit. I think that's what they're going to look at. Officials timeout. The ruling on the preceding play is under further review. The ruling on the field was a completed catch in bounds. Washington fans love hearing that. <laughs> now you're with me, Davey. Yeah. Take a look here. Williams working down the sidelines. It looks there like he plucks it. Okay, but watch the bobble. And his foot's it's already still coming. Down. It's moving a little bit. The ball was moving in his hands. I Watch. This will be a better angle, I think. And remember, indisputable video evidence is the standard. No control. 
I think he's got yeah, it. Davey, I think yeah. he's got it with yeah. one hand. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's uh, a catch. Yeah. I think that's a grab. Here you go. He's got it in two hands. I, I think it's a shift. I, 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 it shift a little bit when it hits the ground. Though? Well, it's got to be in, it's got to be indisputable though, and I, I don't know if the referee's looking at that from any of those angles to be able to come to a conclusive decision that it was in fact juggled. But I tell you what, to throw the ball too between the corner and a safety, yeah. that was a heck of a throw by but, Keith Cross. You know, they're going to have to find explosive plays in the passing game. This Stanford defense is too good to drive 10, 12, 14 plays to score points. So I love the attitude right now and the attacking approach by Steve Sarkeesian. And After further video review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, Washington. No indisputable video evidence with which to overturn the call. Doesn't mean that it was absolutely certain based on the replay that it was right. When you go to the ground, you have to complete the catch. You're being knocked to the ground. It looked to me as if he did. Looked as if they got it right. Washington will certainly take it. First and ten now. Price into traffic in the end zone, and probably good thing he threw that over Austin Safari and Jenkins' head. It'll be second down and ten in the red zone. Last couple of seasons, Keith Price has taken care of the football and done an excellent job getting it in the end zone. I think he showed his football IQ with these numbers right here. In the most critical positions on the field, he makes his best decisions. Touchdowns or checkdowns, he does not turn the football over in the opponent's red zone. Nice to throw, runs out of time quickly. It is a swinging gate up front. If Price doesn't get rid of the ball quickly, Stanford's in the back of the heart. There's a tremendous amount of inexperience up front right now, as we documented uh, on this offensive line. You look just inside. There's the backup middle linebacker again, Alex Debniak, just winning, almost untouched. Well, I don't understand why you use a tight end to block Chase Thomas either. I mean, that, you better know where 44 is. He's one of the best players, one of the best linebackers in the country. He's on the left side now. Comes to number 44. It's at the top, and once again, Price has company in the backfield, and he just has to get rid of it. A.J. Tarpley, one of the reserve linebackers that Stanford views as a starter, gets there in a hurry. Another backup getting pressure on Keith Price, and right now there are floodgates opening in the middle of the field. You see stunts and twists. And the guy who gets fooled on that play is center Drew Schaefer, who's got 33 career starts. He's the only experienced lineman on this Washington front, not the guy you expect to be making a mental error. So Travis Coons is going to try it from 43 yards out. His career long is 41. He's trying to tie the game. It is on its way, and we are tied. A career long for Coons. I'm not giving Coons a lot of credit on that whole drive. He got the punt off earlier that Penn Stanford in its own end, and he pays it off with a field goal at Washington, even with the Cardinal at three. Stanford and Washington tied at three. The Huskies just had a field goal. Look how impressive this is. Not the field goal. Ooh. The hands by the band right now. Is that a cat? I'm going to need to go to the booth for that one. Yeah. He's on a ladder. I'm going to need confirmation. Give that guy a scholarship. Give him a ride. That was pretty solid. How about our kicker on that one, though? Left footed punt, right footed field goal kick. Pretty solid. The left footed punt was not by design. Alex Carter hit hard as he crosses the 30 yard line. As we wind down toward two minutes to go in the first quarter. Stanford will have it back. Celebrating its eighth year, sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, all state makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, all state has contributed more than $2.8 million in scholarship money. Josh Nunes back out with the Stanford offense. They really haven't gotten Stephon Taylor lathered up yet. Here he comes. Brian Hewitt leading the way. And 
Taylor right out of bounds. Marcus Peters. Yeah, Reese, I think that's going to change. I think we're going to start seeing Stephon Taylor tote the rock a lot. I mean, he is the bell cow for this offense. Had 71 snaps two weeks ago against USC. The offense not working so smoothly right now. you got to turn around and give it to your best player. To the body, Rock. To the <laughs> body. Very important that they keep hitting those body blows with a big physical offensive line. Look, more offensive linemen checking the game. You've got a ton of them up there now. See a couple offensive linemen wearing numbers in the 90s. That's Dylan Bunnell at 96 on the near side. Taylor is going to push up close to the 40. He needs to get to the 41 for a first down. It'll be third down again for first half. And, and, and you know, maybe you just run it again. I just get up to the line of scrimmage with this per personnel grouping and try to push a much smaller, much less experienced front seven from Washington backwards. Two very good looking runs in a row now. Calling it third and one, it is a long one. in the box. The give is to Hewitt and Ryan Hewitt, the hybrid tight end fullback. We'll see what kind of spot he gets. The Huskies think they got him stopped. John Timo is in there from his linebacker position. That's interesting. Why not give it to Stephon Taylor then? And your workhorse back who's he's got so much power and strength and he's used to running this play. Ryan Hewitt, he's vers Mr. Versatility. The guy catches more spider three wide bananas than anybody else in the country, but I don't know if that's your best option when you need one yard. Spider three wide banana. And yet another huge win for this, what we thought was overmatched Washington defense. And it's Stanford's third three and out tonight. Wow. Kuklinski gets it away. Bobble on the reception. Jack Thompson picks up a couple. Jarek Lancaster on the stop. We'll start the second quarter from Century Link Field. And so far, the Huskies have been able to hang in. It's 3-3 after one. Stanford and Washington tied at three as we start the second quarter. You see a lot of guys with big numbers without their pads on the sideline. Chances are they're injured offensive linemen for Washington. When they came out of the Alamo Bowl last year, the five guys they expected to start on the offensive line, four of them not available for this game. Bishop Sankey getting a good pickup on first down. As we check in with Chris Cotter in the studio. Sports Center right now, presented by Coors Light. Knuckleballer R.A. Dickey won his 20th game this afternoon, 6-5 over the Pirates. He's the first Met since Frank Viola in 1990 to win 20 games. And former Met bench coach Manny Acta fired as manager of the Indians after almost three seasons. Sandy Alomar Jr. named interim manager. Back to the game. Bishop Sankey, a short pickup on second down, and Washington's looking at a third and one. We're doing a good job offensively of running to the edge and trying to get outside, away from all that beef and that front seven inside of Stanford's defense now. This spread offense with the zone reads. Paying dividends. Third and short. First down and more. Getting up close to the 40-yard line with tough running is Bishop Sankey. DeAndre Campbell, the wide receiver, helping clear the way. And Sark wants him to pick up the tempo. Seeing a lot of different formations. This is a bunch look where they motion a player to get the seal on the edge. Gets a great block up front at the linebacker level to help clean that run up. And rid of it quickly. Casey Williams makes a guy miss. And another. And Williams, a good pickup before Scove knocks him out of bounds. 
And the tempo is starting to help a little bit. And it, you know what? It also helps the offensive line, too, because Absolutely. they don't have to hold the blocks as long. And that's Casey Williams' fourth catch on the outside. But it's also easy. I mean, you run the ball, you had some success, dump it out there, let it make one guy miss. Athletically, you're going to have an advantage on the outside all night long. And Casey Williams is trending on Twitter now, by the way. <laughs> How about you check Twitter during the game? Got the update right here, dog. Keith Price pulls it. He may chase Thomas Miz, but he got stuck in there by Shane Scope. This is going to be a necessary evil for Washington tonight if they're going to have success. Keith Price has to have success running the football. They got to use his legs. Now, last year he was so beat up, they couldn't use his legs. In this game tonight, he's more healthy now, believe it or not, than he's ever been during his time at UW. If, if they don't lock up front, he's not going to be healthy for long. Pressure up the middle every single time on third down. Look to see if they can roll the pocket, get him on the move a little bit up top. Empty behind Price. And he's having to escape. And he's not going to make it to the first down. It'll be fourth down. Chase Thomas is there. So you mentioned the Price, not only guys, not only the offensive lineman were injured. They lost their starting running back in Jesse Callier. Deontay Cooper is a running back that's had three ACL injuries since he's been here. They'd hope to have him back. Lost a wide receiver in James Johnson. And 15 to 16 guys who were supposed to start or be key contributors. Lost for the season or losing significant time. A beautiful punt. This time with the right foot, Pollock. Oh, if they can get there, and they could not. Somebody has to get there after Coons had it hanging around the one for a while on a 53-yard punt. He'd rather had a 52-yarder. Saturday on ABC, ABC's Afternoon College Football, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings, will take you to the banks of the Red Cedar. The Big Ten, Ohio State, Michigan State. College game day will be there. Le'Veon Bell going against that Ohio State defense, which has given up a lot of big passing plays. Spartans haven't found their rhythm in the passing game yet. Ohio State and Michigan State coming up on Saturday. The Hulk package in for Stanford. That's a lot of big guys in front of Stephon Taylor. Washington is doing an excellent job in run defense right now. And Stanford has to stay patient, Reese. They got to get back to running the football. I never thought I'd say this, guys. Washington has more rushing yards right now than Stanford does. They got to be patient. Force feeds Stephon Taylor the football. He's one of the best running backs in the country. Well, and at some point, they got to get some guys out of the box, too, because Washington's just coming up going, hey, go. We're going to man up on the outside. We're going to bring as many people in the box. And now, look at this. Five wides now. Including Taylor, who's at the top of the screen. Nunes will heat behind him. He gets rid of it just in time. And an excellent defensive play by Justin Glenn, the senior. One of five guys still here from the Tyrone Willingham era. Glenn forces a third and seven. Right now, Washington is winning the one-on-one -on -one matchups when they get up close and play man-to-man -man coverage across the screen. Glenn doing a nice job competing for that football. Earlier, we saw Desmond Trufant break up a big pass to Ty Montgomery. And that sets up another third and long, something Stanford not built to convert offensively in the passing game. Cardinal Jesse just one of five on third down tonight. And from this distance, gotten the goose egg. Flag flying. And now whistles are going. Play of game, offense. Five yard penalty, still third down. We talked about communication environment. When the play call comes in, you got to break the huddle, get up to the line of scrimmage. When you want to shift in motion, you got to be efficient. You got to go fast. Right now, not going fast enough. Here is to Montgomery. And Montgomery is going to be swarmed under by a sea of black jets.
jerseys and Washington forces another three and out. Great job by Washington, getting them exactly what they want, third and long. Stanford has playmakers, but they're not elite speed guys on the outside. Put them in a good position, drop eight guys into coverage, tackle the ball underneath, get it back to your offense. Freshman Marvin Hall received the punt. And Marvin just caught that one like an outfielder. Too far away from Safeco. Got into him, but he catches it firmly. Five possessions for Stanford tonight. Four times the Huskies have forced a three and out. ESPN College Football Primetime is served by Applebee's. Try the new Southwest Flavors two for $20 menu all season long. See you tomorrow. And in part by Buick. Experience your kind of convenience, peace of mind, entertainment, and luxury. Hey, in the Pacific Northwest, you might as well serve up a little salmon. Gabriel's Fire Restaurant just outside Seattle. This is a great food city. That is. Salmon and scallops. We had a little salmon, a little, little Northwest King salmon last night. Race. Cedar plank in the chef's special smoke rub. Mm, yeah. Pollock had a, Pollock had a, a, a filet. Give me the filet, baby. <laughs> Give me the beef. First to ten for Keith Price. Washington defense has been eating up Stanford so far. A little zone read look again, and Price has only hit five of his first 12 passes, but demeanor for him is key in how he handles a tough time. He's faced a lot of adversity, Reese, and last year life was good. He had two senior wide receivers in Jermaine Curse and Devin Aguiar. He had an NFL left tackle in Senio Calamente. He had a 1,200-yard back in Chris Polk. And as a result, they scored more points than they had since 1991. This year, Reese, you mentioned all of those injuries. Times have been tough, and it's affected him. It's frustrated him. That showed against LSU. His leadership getting tested tonight. He's getting hit a lot. One of the things that Sarkeesian and Keesaw, the coordinator, talked to him about is he completes the pass to DeAndre Campbell. Whether he likes it or not, all of his teammates are looking to him. They notice his body language. They look at his demeanor. And if he gets frustrated when he gets hit, it sort of brings down the whole operation. Especially when it's not you. Yeah. When it's right. people around you that are messing up and you get frustrated. Jay Cutler on TV on a, a couple of weeks ago, we saw him. Everybody talked about they didn't like the body language. Dude, when somebody else messes up, you just got to slap him on the booty sometimes and say, it's okay. Let's get back out there. Let's do it again. Because there's going to be a time, Reese, when you throw a pick. And it is your fault. You want people jumping on you? Or down in one. Price completes it quickly and enough for the first down. Kendall Taylor with the grab. There is a flag down on the field. When Keith Price, known for his infectious smile, let's see if he's smiling after this call. It was one of the reasons they reacted. Guess they got a block in the back. Oof, that's big on third third short. Just converted as well. Almost using these. Single block in the back. Number two of the offense. Ten yard penalty. Third down. It's on Casey Williams. It seems they're using these quick passes almost yeah. as an extension of the running that's game exactly to get it right. out to the corners. Yeah. And, and it's been working. Yeah. They've been winning the one on ones outside quickly. I mean, you go from third and one, you've got it converted. Now you get a legal block in the back penalty. Now you're back at third and 11 against this pass rush. I mean, Keith Price, get ready right now. You're in the huddle. You're telling your guys, hey, get your depth, turn around, because this thing's coming out now. <laughs> <laughs> and movement on the right side. He'll go to the screen with Sankey. Sankey is not going to get away from Chase Thomas, the All-American. And that's why Chase Thomas is an All-American. Staying home, reading his keys in recognition, snipping the screen out. I mean, they had they had that thing isolated. That was a good play call by Steve Sarkeesian, but you can't fool the All-American. The hardest thing to do on a football field is tackle in space. 100%, especially against a littler back. Chase Thomas, he does a great job rushing the pass. Or just shows off the versatility to be able to cover guys, too. Travis Coons was holding on to that thing for a while. He's getting a little bit of... Pete. And it'll roll dead just outside the 35 yard line. 3 3 as Stanford gets the ball back. And one of the reasons Stanford has it back is our Home Depot coaching adjustment tonight. Now, this offensive line has been very porous. The majority of the pressure, I think, has been coming 
right up the middle. And he's only been sacked one time as Keith Price, but this pressure really has affected him and has not allowed him to get into a rhythm or play on time. And it's not just the starters that are getting him, guys. It's a bunch of the backups as well. Stanford looking as if it plans to go a little big on big. A lot of big fellas up front. Stephon Taylor. It's it just across the 38 pickup of about three. And Keith still, Price still working smiling. with these guys on the sideline. You know, still he's smiling. got such a great smile. One of the yeah. nicknames somebody gave him was Teeth Price because he's got, <laughs> they got the great smile. You know, I was around him at the Manning Passing Academy this past summer. His personality, guys, is infectious. I mean, you see Matt Barkley and a bunch of other the best quarterbacks in the country hanging around close to Keith Price because of that outgoing personality this month. Second down and six for Nunes. Fired loan is incomplete. And Ty Montgomery, Ty trying to sell the catch. It's third down and six. And it's plenty of protection. That's not the problem for Josh Nunes. He has a receiver. He has to hit him. You know, it's, it's interesting. It is handoff, 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 but he has to be able to get back in those situations, pull the trigger. And complete that ball so it's not third and six, third and seven so much for That's why they struggle on third down so much. Hey guys, if I'm Josh Nunes right here, third and long, where are my tight ends? Where are my best playmakers? I got Zach Ertz at the top of the screen right now. He's out there by himself, low, too. No one's covering. I mean, right now, snap it. Get it going. Had to get the freshman's Shaq Thompson in position to cover Ertz. Nunes gets it away just in time, and he was firing for Cody Whitfield. The son of the legendary Stanford lineman Bob Whitfield. And it's fourth and six, and that is the fifth three and out forced by defensive coordinator Justin Wilcox's crew. And, and we talk about body blows, and we talk about wearing somebody down. You don't do it when you keep going three and out. Don't expect to wear down what? Washington up front unless you can run the football and actually pound them. You're throwing body blows, and, and then you're following it up with like a giant haymaker to the head. Like, just keep working the body. Daniels with Klinsky. Off. Marvin Hall catches on the run. Marvin is greeted and knocked down immediately. Alex Carter making the tackle. So Keith Price been under heat all night. But can he get that offense going for the Huskies? Well, the dogs have been howling so far, particularly on defense. Washington and Stanford, a little over halfway through the second quarter, still tied at three. Blackout conditions are calling it the blackout of the century at Century Link Field. Washington donning those uniforms. They've been blacked out the last few times they played the Cardinal, having lost four in a row, but they're holding their own so far here tonight. Keith Price again getting pressure and Backward pass, dumps it out, making a play, and Bishop Sankey picking up the first down and a little improvisational skill from the Husky quarterback. I think one of Keith Price's greatest assets is his pocket presence and movement in the pocket while keeping his focus downfield. He gets through three different progressions, guys, on that play. Keeps the poise, finds his outlet receiver, moves the chain. And he, that won't count as a pass because he threw that ball behind right. the line of scrimmage. And that's how, that's how good of creativity it was for him to be able to see him in the flats and hit him. Bishop Sankey will have a 14-yard run as a result of that play. And the Huskies have a first down. Here comes the pressure again. And oh, once again, another drop from the wide receiver, DeAndre Campbell, the sophomore. Price escaped, got it right to him. Ball's got to be caught. Guys, we've talked about how physical Stanford is on defense, and it's because they're big. In fact, they look like an NFL defense. When you compare them to the San Francisco 49ers, I mean, they match up position for position across the board. They got two, three, four defensive ends that are 275 pounds at least. Nose tackle that's over 300 bills. All four linebackers are at least 240, and they got two corners that are six foot one. I mean, that's the best defense in the National Football League. Stanford looks a lot like that. The draw. Good pickup, first down, and plenty of running room as Bishop Sankey has his second big carry, 15 yards this time. And Washington has pushed it into Cardinal territory. Good job mixing it up. Big hit at the end, but Keith Price has softened it up with his feet then at the end. 
You can hear it. Very impressed tonight with Bishop Sankey, their backup tailback. He's been very patient in the running game so far. You know, they thought when they lost Jesse Callier, their starter, that's what they lost. Jesse Callier really understood the blocking schemes. Bishop Sankey's done a nice job tonight, waiting for creases to open and then hitting. Play action. Does he have time? Price has to get away from one from Trent Murphy, and then he just throws it out of bounds. It's just not time to do it. No, it's a great idea. You ran the football positively. Now, he's looking like he's a little upset with his teammates, and we talked about that a little bit already in the broadcast, but you have to be able to run the football. They ran the football successfully. Then you take a shot and play action, and you have no protection. You have two guys sitting there to block Stanford when they come on the blitz and you don't do it, so I, I would be upset. I mean, you have time if you could take advantage, you just can't get any time. Hey, right, look, and you see the frustration again now for Keith Price, looking back at Micah Hachi, his left tackle. Let's go, let's go, I need time. He's also upset with Jonathan Amosa. Quick slant, Casey Williams makes a guy miss, still on his feet. And a lot of white jerseys coming around to corral him as we check in with Samantha Steele. Yeah, Reese, you guys have been noticing Keith's frustration. I've seen that every time he's coming off, coming off the field, every time there's a th three and out, every single time he's been sitting by himself. And when the O-line gets together, O-line coach Dan Cazetto has gotten in the face of Micah Hatchie, who you just mentioned, the left tackle, and he keeps telling him, you've got to get your pad level lower. Guys, it's back to the basics with a young group like this. On third and four, a lot of these guys simply just didn't, they didn't expect to have to rely on this early. And Price was chased by James Vaughters, and he tried to throw it away. You know, they have unique athletes on the Stanford secondary. Four different linebackers can blitz. Here's James Vaughter. He's the youngest, but they think that he has the most potential of any He just blitzes right through, David. They didn't barely even touch him. Yeah, there, there's a flag down, guys, because... Awesome down from the spot of the pass. Well, the reason was because and that's why I was surprised not to see the flag earlier. When Price tried to throw it away, it didn't get past the line of scrimmage, so he's called for intentional grounding. And I, I understand the frustration, but he, he does have to keep it together, stay cool. And, and that's, it's amazing. You start talking about quarterbacks across the country. The ones that always seem to play the best is the one that stay even keel. They stay, when they get banged around and when somebody makes a mistake, mistake okay, get by yourself for a second, but then get ready to rally the team. It's hard. It's it, a leadership oh, it's position. Hard. It's hard. I've been there, and it's hard. Low punt from Coons and Terrell comes up and fields it just inside his own 20 yard line. Stanford has a mere two first downs in the first half. Keith Price been running for his life all night. Stanford hasn't gotten much done in the first half on offense, Jesse. These numbers aren't very good. <laughs> they haven't been able to sustain drives, and we've talked about it. They've done a good job recently of running the football early in the drive, and then they seem to take their foot off the gas and start throwing the football, and they haven't had success. I think they need to figure out what they want to do, but you got to give Justin Wilcox and Washington defense credit so far for being able to tackle. I mean, it's tough to tackle Stephon Taylor consistently. On first and ten, this time Stephon Taylor's going to try to get the edge, and he went up and got knocked down. Tried to hurdle over the top. Trey Watson, along with John Timu, making the stop for the Huskies. Justin Wilcox, in his first year as a defensive coordinator for Steve Sarkeesian, taking over for Nick Holden. It was a very difficult thing that Sark had to do in firing his longtime friend, Nick Holt. But the, the defense came apart last year, most notably in the Alamo Bowl against it, Baylor. It had to be done. They were one of the worst defenses in school history a year ago. Different kind of energy. Wilcox prior to his time at Tennessee, been at Boise State. Nunes Whoa. threw the ball Whoa. to Ryan Hewitt on a screen, and Nunes is really, really scuffling. He's 4 of 13. He has to settle down right now, and everything seems like it's moving too fast. You see ghosts. He turns around here. It's almost as if he thought there was pressure. Oh. I mean, that, that's a big I mean, game. I mean, you. For the starting quarterback at Stanford. I know you're not Andrew Luck. You got to complete that throw. Andrew Luck, that's not me in the pocket. <laughs> With your left bad. hand. With that's, your left hand. You can't leave those plays on the field. Not with somebody's right. wide open. All right, now, third and five again. Where's your matchup? Where's your best matchup? Levine Toilolo right here at the top. 
just gets it off to beat the play clock. Nunes firing to a wide open Zach Ertz. That'll help. Ertz into Washington territory, down to the 40-yard line, and Sean Parker stops it in. 35-yard pickup for Ertz. That's the second time tonight we've seen Zach Ertz come wide open on a deep corner throw. Looks like a little bit of a, a coverage bust, and there was a true freshman, Shaq Thompson, lined up right over top of him. Sean Parker at strong safety, veteran safety. You know, there's an issue there, and I, I, I would tend to believe the more experienced safety in Parker probably didn't make that bust. Now Stanford hoping to capitalize on the big play in the passing game. They've been rare. Nunes firing for Montgomery, and Montgomery with the good hands, but they... I see, are they giving it, calling it incomplete? No, guys, this is actually one area where I think this offense is better this year than when Andrew Luck was here. You know what they've attempted more go routes and fade throws in the first three games than they had it all in the last two years. They're seeing a lot more one-on-one -on -one matchups outside. That's a, that's a very perfect throw there by Josh Nunez. And if all the time Montgomery can bring that. I know you want to mix it up, but Stanford had success three or four or five yards a pop. They need to pound Washington consistently. They need to run the football consistently. So back to the ground with Taylor. They were still chugging. Picked up about four. It's tough to run in. No, David, to the 11 black jerseys, do you yeah. do you understand what Pep Hamilton, I know you understand, yeah. do you agree with what Pep Hamilton is trying to do to try to spread well, him out and get him out of the box a Stephon little bit? Taylor is a very versatile back. He can run outside, too. I think they've had some success getting him on the edges a little bit. But if you're getting four yards, I know you want to mix it up, but if I get four yards three plays in a row, that equals a first down. I need five here. This is big to convert this down in distance, to stay on the field, eat up more clock. Now Washington is going to use a timeout. Just inside Washington. three minutes remaining in the half. Yeah, 30 seconds timeout. All field goals so far. And Stanford trying to mount a threat late in the drive. Just starting off a tremendous college football weekend. In college football prime time, you'll see two of the top four teams in the country. First, 6 o'clock Eastern time. Florida State off a huge win against Clemson going against the struggling South Florida team. And then Hugh Freeze in his first year at Ole Miss goes into Brian Dane. Face A.J. McCarron at Alabama at 915 Eastern. Guys, how about A.J. McCarron, the way he's playing so far this year? I know whenever we talk Alabama, we always talk defense and running game. A.J. McCarron right now is the fourth most efficient quarterback in the entire country. You see that lineup there, guys? Five of the top six teams in the country you'll see in prime time on one of the various ESPN platforms. You're seeing number eight right now getting a tussle from Washington. Stanford on third and five. Pressure coming. Nunes lobs it up high for Toy Lolo, and there's a flag coming. Ball knocked free. It's almost certainly going to be a pass interference or a hold. As Washington, Washington was trying to stay even with the big 6 8 wow. tight end. Well, Josh Nunes had the matchup he wanted. Levine Toy Lolo, nine inches taller than safety Justin Glenn, who was covering him one on one. Fast interference, number 20 of the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. <laughs> I mean, w w what do you want him to do when he's out there? Again, he gives up so much height to a bigger athletic tight end. He's holding on to his left arm, trying to drag him to the ground. And that's a throw that Josh Nunes has really worked on perfecting here in practice over the last couple of weeks, that jump ball fade pass to his big tight end. It's more like a pop-up 500 throw. Just <laughs> 500 like a, up. It's like a sky ball. 500, go catch it. He's six foot 18. Uh, I think the the thing we're we're looking at here is to see whether it's a 15 yard penalty or whether it was completion and a fumble out of bounds. Toy Lolo seemed to have control of the football. They seem to snag it. Right the out penalty of the was too high, so they're calling it a catch. It was knocked free, ruled a fumble out of bounds. Well, that was a big, another big third down. We we talked about third downs being the issue for Stanford early. Now on this drive. Josh Nunes has had two big completions on third down, two of his big play tight ends. That was a fumble. Yeah, it was. And an extra three yards. It was an 18-yard completion as opposed to the penalty. So Stanford back in the red zone. Nunes fires, looking for Ertz, and it's incomplete. Ertz wanted another flag. He's not going to get it. Marcus Peters I, I just, on the cover. I, I go back, guys. The reason this was the best red zone offense in the country last year was because they ran the football. In this area of the field, 
you have to be able to assert your dominance and will. And I, I, that's a small window to throw into. They generally are down here in the red zone. This is an area of the field I expect you have to run the ball first down. This drive is almost Matt Stanford's offensive output for the evening. Looking at a second and ten. Blake clock is inside ten seconds. And it'll be a timeout. And David Shaw, who always seems to maintain his composure, calm, cool, collective. But there, you look very closely, there, there's a hint of frustration, yeah, there is. I think, I think with, the, with the offense at the moment. But Stanford has an opportunity to finish on a high note late in the first half, just over two minutes to go. And right now, what do you expect to see them do on second uh, half? Run, run the football, no doubt. And the last thing, the first thing you got to do here, obviously, is get points and take a lead into halftime. Guys, the reason he's frustrated is because of the play of Josh Nunes. Yeah. Now, it's the second straight game. We've seen him start very slow. But against USC, he got better in the second half. These last couple third downs, he's playing a little bit better. He's going to have to continue that progression moving forward. Yeah, and it's important that Shaw keep his cool to help Nunes keep his cool as well. But you got it. You got to give him some credit. He has made two big plays on third down. Now here comes the Wildcat. He's not even in the game. <laughs> Just snaps it easy. Taylor. Taylor countered. Picks up a few. It'll be third down. You know, play calling mechanics have not been smooth so far in this game. We saw a delay of penalty, a delay of game penalty early before having to burn that timeout. You know, David Shaw puts a lot. He expects a lot of his quarterback. Josh Newton is extremely intelligent. And he's not gonna he's not gonna lay off. He expects him to operate the offense in the plays that are called. Another big third down now. So the first question, where are the tight ends? One's in the backfield, Torlolo is beside Nunes. Ertz is in the slot. Dumped to Taylor. Stefan Taylor plowing forward, but he will not get the first down. A very very safe pass, and you wonder right now um, what the confidence level is at the moment in, in Josh Nunes. It looks like right now at the moment uh, there's no kicker coming on the field, therefore he's coming. Josh Nunes. They'd be expecting to run He's going to be coming. <laughs> there he comes. Uh, 115 remaining in the first half, and now it does look like Shaw is going to send his field goal unit out. So we go back to the studio and check in with Chris Cotter. Breeze coming up on the Land Rover Halftime Report. We've got two big Big Ten games to look forward to this weekend. Texas has a test in Stillwater and Spider 3Y Banana. I have no idea, but apparently Brian Greasy does. It's coming up in the half. <laughs> you know, the Spider 3Y Banana. Yes, say it right. Don't Spider throw banana. the backside curl on Spider 3Y Banana. If you watch John Gruden's quarterback camp, that was the play that Stanford ran, which Andrew Luck threw the interception pick against six. USC at pick six last year. And John was all over Andrew. When that play came up in our meeting for Pep Hamilton yesterday, we all laughed, and, and Pep laughed at us for laughing at him. <laughs> Jordan Williamson. It's the field goal up, and he had missed his last four coming into the game, but now he is two for two, a 28-yarder. Gives the eighth-ranked Cardinal a three-point lead. No touchdowns in the Pac-12. Bastions of defense all of a sudden. 6-3, Cardinal with the edge. Josh Nunes' numbers in the first half against Washington, very similar to his numbers against USC. First half haven't been nearly as good. He was 6 of 17 for 78 yards. Couple of picks against the Trojans in the first half. He's 7 of 18 for 105 tonight, but he hasn't thrown the ball to the other side, which is a positive, but he has struggled in his first road start. The Cardinals still with the 6-3 lead because their defensive front has been dominant as well. As Marvin Hall, the freshman, he's got great speed. And gets by one more wave, and Marvin might have been running for a while. And this is what Keith Price in Washington has had to do. They have to do this to survive with their offensive line. The quick passing game, getting some of their athletes out in space, letting Keith Price make decisions, making people miss. Basically an extension of the running game. This has been a, the most effective part of their running game so far. Spread them out a little bit, and then they've had some success running in between the tackles, which we didn't think they would. 
That doesn't really work in a two-minute situation, though. That's the tough part. You're going to need to take some shots. I was just going to say, you gotta be, you got to be careful now if you're Steve Sarkeesian because you don't want to take five seven-step drops, have a defender hit you in the back of the head, lose a fumble, give Stanford more points. Uh, you're, you're in the game right now. You don't want catastrophe exactly. right before halftime. I think that's what Sark is thinking, too. Maybe seeing if they can pop a run and get in a little bit better field position to take some shots as we're inside 50 seconds. But I think losing six to three right now against the eight ranked team in the country at halftime at, at your place is pretty good. Rice is going to take a shot. Jason Williams is incomplete. It'll be third down and nine. That's the second time tonight they've tried what's called a slow go route to Casey Williams, that slant go that they've had opportunities for down the side. Let me check that. Oh, number right. two, it's Kevin number eight, Smith. it's Kevin Smith, who's just back off of injury. You know, eight rather than two. The degree of difficulty that Keith Price is having to play with is really, really tough. I mean, he's got to be really good, not to mention the rush coming at him, but in the back end, fitting in some tight windows. He's done a good job without good numbers this first half, just staying alive. Bishop Sank. Sank is going to pick up three, maybe four, but it's not enough for the first down. We're inside 30 seconds to go. And Stanford going to use a timeout and force Washington to punt it? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think they're good enough throwing the football to get huge chunks of yardage yeah. in the passing game. I, you know, if I had a six foot 18 tight end like Toy Lolo, I'd take a shot. We've seen some Hail Marys lately. Didn't we just see one in this stadium the other night? I mean, we did indeed. Thank you. That's what I think. So Stanford uses its timeout, 13 seconds remaining. And speaking of the Hail Mary at the end of the Seahawks Packers game on Monday night, last thing on Josh Nunes' mind at the moment was this play from Russell Wilson. Ballyhooed and disputed play. Get off me, Gold Tate. Gold Tate says, get out of here, Sam Shields. MD Jennings. Had the interception, it appeared. Golden Tate got a hand on it late. It was right in that corner of the end zone. Not only did it give the Seahawks a win, but you see they're spelling out Golden Tate on the chest of some of the fans. Some support, and that punt is almost blocked. Second time tonight, Stanford's almost got to the punt. But it, I don't know how much that they will give credit for, but perhaps that play in the Monday night football game led to a labor piece between the referees and the league. Look at the pressure here, just coming up the middle. There's Zach Hoff power. Hoff power doing a nice job. Got it He's off. Almost untouched. <laughs> got to get a body on it. Got it off in a little over two seconds. That's they want to take a shot to that big six foot 18 tight end. The problem is the throw is going to have to be about 66 yards yeah. to reach. <laughs> so I think you just take a knee. You almost and go blocked the punt, though. Right? You almost blocked yeah. the punt. That's what they were going for because now they're going to take a knee and send it to halftime. And if you had Bishop Sankey outrunning Stephon Taylor in the first half, you win. Or your Lions. Sankey was 63 yards. Taylor's been held to 46. Washington's going to get it to start the second half. Neither team able to make it into the end zone, but the Cardinal with the lead at the break, Sam. Coach, you told me before the game the unknown was how your guys would do on the road. What do you know now that you didn't an hour and a half ago? That we better play a lot better in the second half. First half was not good enough. What do you have to do to be able to sustain drives like we're used, drives like we're used to seeing out of Stanford? Well, it's everything. Everything's got to be better. Uh, we've had some good runs, but we had a chance to break a couple, and we haven't broken one. We had some guys open. We got to hit the throws. We got to make some catches. We got to make some tough catches. In order to do something, in order to win on the road, you got to make plays better than we've made so far. How's Josh handling the pressure? He's handling the pressure fine. He's got to relax and play. All right, I'll let you get in there. Thanks, Thank Coach. You. Guys. Uh, David Shaw, 14 and 2 as the head coach at Stanford. His team up 6-3. That's the score. Let's check in. Chris Cotter, Brian Greasy, Mark May, Land Rover Halftime Report. Welcome back to Tailgate Week. Fired up by Kingsford Charcoal.
Stanford from Washington on the other way downtown. They've been derailed on their way to the end zone. The ESPN's college football prime time served by Applebee's. Field goals in the first half. Stanford on top of Washington. Six to three at the break. There is Keith Price. Time to get that Husky offense going. Let's take a look at tonight's intelligent move brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Well, that's Stanford's identity on offense is to run the football. And early in this game, Stephon Taylor, a tailback, was having some success on the ground. But inexplicably, Stanford has now gotten away from the running game a little bit. And as a result, it's set up long third downs. The quarterback, Josh Nunes, has not been able to convert on. It's put this offense off of rhythm. I think in the second half, they have to go back to doing what they do. They got to go back to running the football and being physical. Well, it's running the football, and you look at the rush plays, you know, 15, 18 pass plays. Andrew Luck handed the ball off, what, 55% of the time yeah. when he was here. So, but when you do pass, you get frustrated up here in the booth, and it's easy for us to get frustrated. But when it's second and six or second and five, it's just staying on schedule as an offense, making it third and short, making another first down. They've ran it adequately, but they got to complete those small those small plays over the middle that they've done in the past to keep drives alive. So the second half is underway, and the freshman Marvin Hall will bring it out of the end zone. Marvin gets up close. 25-yard line, Samantha Steele working the field. Yeah, Reese, I caught up with Sark over here a couple minutes ago and asked him what his quarterback advice for Keith Price is. He smiled and he said he has to keep his energy level right. He can't try to do too much and press because he's running for his life. He said they are going to make some changes on the O-line. You'll see more guys rotated in, trying to keep them fresh. He said we're a gap protection team, guys. We've got to be able to protect the gap. It's just that simple. They didn't have a lot of bodies to use on the offensive line with all the injuries only listed seven on their depth chart and immediately the offensive line is poured through Trent Murphy finishing off the running back Bishop Sankey. This is exactly what Sam's talking about. Keith Price running for his life now at times it's been on designed run plays in the zone read game. He's had to step up. He's had to understand where the strong points in the pocket are. He hasn't been able to hold on to the football very long. It's put him out of rhythm. He's got to settle in, too. Price throwing for Casey Williams. It's incomplete. It'll be third down and 13. And Stanford, first possession, the first thing they do right there is they go man-to-man -to -man on the outside. They want to take away that quick passing game. And they've, they've been killing them on the outside with the dink and dunk, five yards, break and tackle, make it 10. Stanford's not going to put up with that in the second half. Also, when you do that, though, you give up big plays in the back end sometimes. And you got to find Austin Safarian Jenkins. Who? Big tight end. Exactly. The Safarian? best tight end in the country that nobody talks about. Only one catch so far in this game. He's their best playmaker on offense. He's got to show up now in the second half. And Bryce avoids pressure. Dumps it out in the flat. And Kendall Taylor gets close to the first down, but he's going to be stopped a couple yards short. Shane Scove making the tackle. And there's another Stanford player down. I believe it's Terrence Brown, the junior cornerback from Torrance, California. You know, in fairness to Keith Price, it's very hard to find Safarian Jenkins <laughs> when you don't have very much time to throw right. the football. I mean, on that last play, Safarian Jenkins is running a corner route against man-to-man -man coverage, and he's open. But Keith Price doesn't have time. He's got to get flushed out to the right side, check it down to his back. But he shuffles his feet up in the pocket great, keeping his eyes down the field. And that's what... He's trying to keep the plays alive, not just run it, but throw it. And he's done, he's done a good job running for his life. Stanford. Well, normally you do when you're scared. It's true. Stanford puts no oh. pressure on Travis Coons this time, and he unleashes a big one that Drew Terrell took a fair catch inside his own 20 yard line. This is where Stanford will get it for the first time tonight. Glad to have you with us Thursday night from the Pac-12 in Seattle. Reese Davis, Jesse Palmer, and David Pollock with you. Sam Steele down on the field. You know, one of the things Stanford said it wanted to do on offense was get Josh Nunes' completion percentage up around 60. It's under 40 in the first half. That's one of the reasons they're not running the ball as much because they're messing up on passing. You know, I think the coaching staff can help Josh Nunes right now by getting back to running the football, guys. And I understand it's hard to run against eight and nine-man boxes, but guess what? Stephon Taylor is still averaging over four yards a carry right now. I mean, it's still working. So get back to doing it. Last year, Stanford ran for 200 more yards in the first half than they did tonight. They ran for 47 yards in the first half, 247 last year. 
And they didn't get anything on the first run of the second half. And I'm interested to see how they respond because they've done a great job in the second half so far throughout the season. But also give Justin Wilcox and their defense a lot of credit. They've been mixing up a lot of looks. I think he's actually confused Nunez several times. You know, bringing safeties all the way down to the line of scrimmage. Really doing a good job mixing it up. Wilcox. Wilcox looked like he was in a defensive trance. Play action. Nunes throws it in nicely. He's right on target to Zach Ertz. That's been his favorite target tonight when he has made connections. Even though they don't have a ton of yards on the ground tonight, it's still setting up big opportunities in the play action passing game. Guys, that's the third time tonight Zach Ertz, a tight end, has gotten behind the secondary on a deep corner route, and Josh Nunes has been able to convert. But we haven't seen a lot of play action. We've seen gun. We've, we've seen a lot of shotgun throws. Play action is what they do. That's going to make Nunes feel more comfortable, and they need to get back to that in the second half. Stretch to Taylor. Stefan trying to make something on his own. And he's tripped up by Justin Glenn. How about the tackling, too? I mean, you haven't seen a lot of Washington guys be in position and miss and let Stefan Taylor get loose. You see it. If he makes one miss, the next guy's getting him. That, that's, that's where he gets most of his damage is after contact. That's what this coaching staff stressed during their bye week. They had some physical practices, guys, trying to get mentally and physical ready to take on Stanford, both on offense and defense. You're right, Davey. A lot of good tackling in the open field. Plot of full padded practices leading up to tonight. Second and seven. Play action again. Lunas feels the pressure behind and fires it up deep and off the fingertips of Ty Montgomery. It'll be third and seven. That's one of the plays that David Shaw was talking about. We, we've been tough on Nunes. He's told the receivers to, to make some plays. Guys got to help him out. And guys, that's the second time I think Ty Montgomery's had an opportunity to make a big play downfield with the catch. They get a corner blitz off the edge from Desmond Trufant. It's a nice job of stepping up by Nunes. He gives his receiver a chance here. He's not going to walk in and score. You got to make that catch. Help him out. Trufant had a hold of his leg, and he still threw a dime downfield. Come on, my God, we gotta make a play. Now Nunes needing to make a play. He's up against the play clock. Let's see if he gets it off. And we're gonna have a delay of game penalty on the Cardinal. Delay of game. Offense. That's the third time tonight they've had issues with the play call mechanics. It's the second time they've had a delay of game. So there was a timeout, and maybe David Shaw got the timeout call before the penalty could be assessed. It'll be third down when you come back. Husky crowd bringing it on third down. Cardinal trying to convert. Josh Nunes needing seven yards, and here comes the noise for the First time road starter for Stanford. Pressure coming. Ball's knocked free. On the ground, it's a fumble. Washington has it. Andrew Hudson got it after Josh Shirley knocked it away from Nunez, and it's a turnover for the Cardinal. Washington's defense seemingly doing everything right tonight. We talked about the lack of pass rush earlier in their last two games, but right here, working up the middle. Or coming from the outside, you get a strip from Andrew Hudson. Josh Nunes not getting rid of the football. That's their first sack in three games, guys. Well, it Josh, looks like it's Josh, Josh Shirley. Josh Shirley, yeah. Shirley Hudson outside. recovered it. Shirley knocked it free. That's the first lost fumble of the season for Stanford, and it sets up Washington at the Cardinal 35. See if Price tries to hit him quickly. He gets rid of it, and it's incomplete, second and 10. You know, that defense, they've had chances 
to bring quarterbacks to the ground in the last couple games. They just haven't been able to finish. And oftentimes, Josh remember, Shirley against particular. LSU, yeah. he had Zach Menberger wrapped up twice, wasn't able to bring him down. That time, able to get him on the ground. You see his D-line coach, Tosh Boy, fired up. They keep an eye on Keith Price. He was holding his throwing arm after he took that big shot. It was Murphy that came in and got him just after he released the ball. Have to see how Keith is. They go back to the ground. Bishop Sankey pick up a yard or two. It's going to be third down and long. And, and Keith Price is really favoring that right arm. You hope you just got hit on the funny yeah. ball and kind of lost some feeling. Well, you know, it. after oh, a turnover, you know, I think you were predicting it, Reese. I mean, coordinators like to take a shot in sudden change situations. But to do that, you have to take a five, seven step drop against this defense. We've seen a lot of pressure. Tremendous courage on that play, staying in there, taking a big one. He's going to have to do it again here on third and long. Price well, almost drops the snap, and then he. Flipped it out quickly to DeAndre Campbell. That one went forward, incomplete pass. Guys, and that's extremely disappointing because your defense just gets a turnover deep down in Stanford's territory. You can't do anything with it now. A little, a bit of an issue fielding that ball. You wonder if there's still maybe some uh, a feeling issue in his right hand. Well, they're leading the offense on the field, and then you understand why they're inside the 35-yard line. But that's why that last play was so well. important, that quick pass to get five or six and make this more manageable. He can still punt it. Jason, Price Chuck. Jason Jenkins here. He's been the go-to guy so far in this offense. Casey Williams for Washington. Price not going to punt it. Going to throw it underneath. Campbell trying to stay up to fight for more yardage, but Uswa Umanum, who's a guy that they wanted to target, was up to the challenge that time. Umanum's last name in Nigeria means job well done, and it was on fourth down. You know, it's the second time in two drives now. Keith Price has wanted to go downfield with the football because of the pressure. He's had to come off his primary read, just get the football out of his hand so he won't get sacked. Yeah, but it's fourth and, what, seven? You throw a four-yard yeah, route? He doesn't have time, nine. though, to look downfield for the 12-yard route. Okay, but we got to throw something to try yeah. to get a first down. <laughs> well, you, gotta, you need time to throw something. you gotta, you got a six-foot, six tight end on the outside, throw it up, let him make a play. I mean, I don't, I'm not throwing the ball four yards and letting him get tackled. So I think you have the time. And again, that's a testament to the job the Stanford defense does in a sudden change situation. They go back to the ground. Stephon Taylor been bottled up much of the night. Let's pick up three to Leah Crichton on the stop. You can lean on Stephon Taylor right now if you're Stanford, guys. They were prepared for him having a giant workload this offseason. So much so they didn't even practice yeah. him. I mean, he talked about, David Shaw talked about competition is all across the board of this whole unit. Stephon Taylor didn't even have to get hit live. I mean, he was like, nah, we're, we're doing El Ladanian Thomason treatment on him. Irritated him at times, too, David said. Taylor. It's up across the 40, should have the first down. Well, and they knew his workload would go up, too, because remember, Tyler Gaffney, their backup running back, left the program in the offseason to play baseball. So he didn't see a lot of reps in the offseason, but it's because he was going to see 71 snaps against teams like USC two weeks ago. His his play numbers and his touches, they got to go way up right now. Lean on him. Do you, do you even throw the football here? Or do you just keep pounding it until they stop it? I said, First I, I, down, I pound second it, down. I pound it and send a message. I think you can deflate. You know, it's an exciting Washington team right now. And a defense that feels confident. Deflate them. Exercise on that left side, but they will throw on first down. Hewitt on the backfield makes the grab and a good pickup and leave the second and short. That's why they call him the Spider Man right there. Spider 2 wide banana into the boundary this time. He makes all of his plays catching the football in the flats. Good little play call there on first down to change it up. Uh, that, but I still go back to running. Uh, that rushing first down that Taylor had a moment ago was the first rushing first down the Cardinal have had tonight. Now in second and three. Taylor going to take the direct snap. Stephon Taylor into Washington territory. He has another first down. Now the Cardinal, a little extracurricular with Danny Shelton at the end of that play.
Cameron Fleming. It'll be a first down for Stanford. It's okay to run into a lot of crowd. Look at this right here. There are nine guys in the box if you're watching it on defense, but they got the numbers up front, pound for pound, pulling guys. You see Khalil Wilkes coming around on the guard, doing a great job in another big game for Stephon Taylor. Okay, full start, full start this time. Number 76 of the offense. Five-yard penalty, second out. First. Let's see, that's that's what frustrates you as a coach. That's what David Shaw is over there now. He's going to shake his head because you're doing a good job. You're making four yards a pop. You're doing your body punches. You're grounding and pounding. And now you get a first and 50. Now two four-yard runs doesn't make it third and short. That's when you see some frustration. Keeping it on the ground here, David. And with this formation, probably. But <laughs> Never know. You can slip a tight end out. Toy Lolo is the bottom of the end end screen. And they will. Taylor's going to run it. You know, one of the things, and, and you guys said earlier, you're not sure that ran it enough for your liking in the first half. But Pep Hamilton says that all of those runs start paying dividends, and he called it third quarter. Yep. And right now, I think you're starting to see a little bit of it, starting to see some of the size of Stanford wear on Washington. And those one and two and three yard gains are now turning into five, six, seven plus yard gains. Pep Hamilton being much more patient now in the second half. Nunes to throw on second down. And Taylor gets lit up. A big time hit from Sean Parker. He got drilled. Third and ten. Stanford does a great job of screens on first and second downs. And you can see great job up front identifying it. Sean Parker coming up from the safety spot and says, Mr. Taylor, how do you do? I'll tell you what, this defense to me, they look so much more confident right now. I remember watching them against LSU when the Tigers were running for 242 yards against them. They didn't look like this. Guys are hyped up. They're feeling it. I didn't think Taylor held on to it. He did. It was third and 14, the loss of four. Here come the Huskies after Nunes. Nunes firing incomplete. It'll be fourth down. You know, I think a lot of people right now, you know, speaking about LSU, who beat Washington 41-3 to during week two of the season. Stanford right now, eighth best team in the country, struggling 6-3. to There's a lot of football left, but I think there are voters out there watching this game very closely. You have to look at it that way. I understand it. You know, Les Miles said after the game, he said, that's a good team. They're better than they played against us. They're going to get somebody. He said, you wait and see. Will it be tonight? Right now, Washington's hanging around the Stanford. A oh, short punt. Not even going to get inside the 20. Don't we look at the 12 to 10 Auburn game, too? It's a game that LSU struggled, too, on the other side. So. A very fair point, Counselor. Taylor got drilled. Stanford's hanging on. Why should. ESPN College Football Primetime is served by Applebee's. Try the new Southwest Flavors two for $20 menu all season long. See you tomorrow. And in part by the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Number one overall pick in the most recent NFL draft, Andrew Luck, former Stanford quarterback, now the Indianapolis Colts. Offensive coordinator's position has been endowed in his name. The Andrew Luck, Director of Offense. That's Pep Hamilton's official title. The man who succeeded Andrew on the field is Josh Nunes. And passing yards wise, Nunes about where Andrew was last year against Washington. The difference was Luck's team had about 400 more yards on the ground to work with and 59 more points. Washington heads it back. Kendall Taylor, who has spelled Bishop Sankey in the backfield. Decent pickup on first down. Noon is 10 of 23, 122 yards. Hasn't turned the ball over by throwing an interception. He did have a fumble. I think those numbers can get better in the second half. It looks like Brett Nottingham here, backup quarterback, has got a helmet on with a football. You wonder maybe is he thinking about entering this game? We'll okay, see. tell me. When you're on the sidelines, are you holding the football if you're not going to get in? Or you just, he wants yeah, to just yeah, feel yeah. it? Sometimes you just want to feel it. Yeah. That's what quarterbacks like to do. Good to Keith Price. The flag come flying in close to the line of scrimmage as Taylor out across the 30. You know, 
Justin Holding. Wilk Number 48 of the offense. Ten yard penalty. Second down will be repeated. This is Jonathan Amos, the second time he's had some problems blocking tonight. And he's inspired by his defense, playing so well and tackling so well. Watch Amos with a fullback going to the flats. He was a former linebacker. There you go, look at that. He just holds oh, on the leg. On. He was a linebacker. He was a linebacker before. Hey, That's all Just, he knows. Justin Wilcox has got everybody tackling now. Not just the defense, <laughs> the offense is rolling, baby. You know, guys, Steve said <laughs> he, he said you can't grab the guy, man. That's not why I brought you on the offensive side of the ball, brother. <laughs> and he's already been corrupted. He's been on defense, baby. You actually went the other way. You were a fullback before you played defense. Yeah, best of both worlds. <laughs> Fullbacks are just... Hammers. All she do is hit people. You know, it explains a lot about my brain damage. <laughs> There's a lot more to investigate there. Keith Price throwing to Casey Williams, who gets across the 25. So they pick up about half of what was needed for the first down. We, we should be doing a graphic on how many times Keith Price gets mollywopped every time he throws the football. A three step drop. And he's still getting absolutely blasted. And every time he's getting hit, guys, it's coming right up the middle. And whether it's a defensive lineman beating somebody or linebackers like Shane Scove here on a delayed blitz, those hits are taking a toll. He's 10 pounds heavier this year than he was a year ago. That's not making much of a difference right now. Just keep an eye on Bryce's arm, too, which has been shaken up. Looking for the tunnel screen to Jadon Mickens, a freshman that they wanted to get involved. He's got really good speed, but Stanford there to swallow it up, and it'll be fourth down. Steve Sarkeesian is so handcuffed right now calling plays because he can't buy enough time for his quarterback. That's now the third straight third down. Keith Price has not had an opportunity to hold on to the football for more than two seconds. you got to dial up these quick screens just trying to hope you break a tackle. Pressure coming on Coons, and he gets it out of there. Stanford has been close a couple of times to blocking a punt tonight. Terrell makes another fair catch. Cardinal up by three, getting late in the third quarter. It's time for the AT&T All-America Player of the Week, and it goes to Old Dominion's Taylor Heineke, who threw for a Division I single-game record 730 yards in ODU's 64-61 win over New Hampshire on Saturday. And never forget, you can always get in on the action. All you got to do is text your vote to 34763 to vote for your All-American Player of the Week. Now back to Reese and the gang in Seattle. Inside five minutes to play in the third quarter. A fly sweep, Kelsey Young still on his feet. Young getting up close to first down yardage. And there's a flag down on the play. You see Pep Hamilton now. Andrew Luck, director of offense for Stanford, starting to get creative a little bit with the way he's running the football. Gonna dial up some ball plays. See if they can find something that's going to work. Holding, number 85 of the offense. 10-yard penalty. Let's go first down. That was Ryan Hewitt call for the hold for Stanford. Well, early Friday morning, the Ryder Cup is underway. Day one matches at Medina Country Club that's just outside of Chicago. You not only can see it on ESPN, you can see it on Watch ESPN. Spend a little time getting familiar with some of the United States Ryder Cup rookies, four of them on the squad. The Europeans have won four of the last five Ryder Cup events. We'll tee it up, 8 a.m. Eastern Time, coverage all day on ESPN and watch ESPN. Stanford's been very disciplined for the most part tonight. They only have two penalties. The problem is they've come at the worst times, the last two drives, setting this offense way behind the sticks. Taylor. Pick up a couple. Now the problem is that you come back and try to run against some of that back, but guess what? It's still second in California right now. You got a quarterback that's not completing 50% of his throws. Um, you know, you set yourself up for failure when you get these crucial penalties early in drives like we've seen recently. And something Washington didn't do a year ago was, and you guys saw it defensively, they were horrendous. They weren't where they were supposed to be when they were. Have you seen guys out of position? The one pass to Earth. Besides that, Wilcox doing a great job of getting guys where they need to be. See if they can be in the right spot on second and long. Nunes firing for Montgomery. Trufant got a hand on it and knocked it away. Desmond Trufant 
with the coverage. He had a he had a hand on Montgomery going he, down the sideline. He did, but Desmond Trufant is on an island. He's been on an island all game with Ty Montgomery. You see at the bottom of the screener getting physical, trying to run a double move on him. Uh, he had that hand just kind of spotting on his shoulder. I don't think he tugged him. I think he was just seeing where he was. I, I saw think he a had jersey about ten, pull. I think he had about 10 yards down the field of contact, too. Well, remember, hey, it's, it's okay he, yeah, in college, yeah. you know, until the ball's in the end. But he's a player. I yeah. mean, that, that kid has been on the outside playing man-to-man. -man. He's been doing a great job all game. Be ready for a screen here, potentially, if you're UW on D. Instead, Nunes going to take a shot. He was looking for Jamal Rashad Patterson. Marcus Peters on the coverage, but there is a flag down. An eligible receiver downfield. Number 11 of the offense. This penalty will be declined. Fourth down. It's a formation error. Toy Lolo, the tight end, deemed to be ineligible, meaning he was covered up. And there he is. He's covered up by the wide receiver. Wow. Jaklinski puts away a nice punt. Paul. Oh. Another flag, going to have a block in the back, we assume. Hall, still on his feet. And Hall's got the great speed, and he's going to take it all the way. But the flag is sitting back at the 25-yard line. The first time we've seen anybody run to the end zone tonight. He ran 74 yards to do it. And it looks as if we're going to be trotting back this way. We've been getting a lot of touchdowns on Thursday nights, huh? <laughs> Good defensive guy, you ought to like that, off. right? Yeah. As Terry Layden, our referee, the call all sorted out. He stepped out right there at the well, 48. The, the, I mean, in the, but, yeah. but the hole, I mean, there was a hole yeah, in the back, back and yeah, a hole in the back right away when he caught the ball. There is no foul for kick it interference. Wow. Wow. He's blocked into the contact. He's also to play first down at this point. Okay, so he's blocked into the contact. Wasn't an illegal block, they call it, like, like we originally suspected. And now Shaw is very fortunate that yeah. Hall stepped out of bounds or it'd be a touchdown. Let's go here and take here a look go. at this down here at the bottom. Uh, he I had mean, a pretty good hold yeah, on I mean, him, he, too. Yeah, it sounded like he had two hands full of jersey there. And outside. And look at this. This is close right here, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he right out. there on the edge. Wow. Oh, the ball is intercepted! Trent Murphy! And for the second straight Thursday night, we get a big fella. What, what, what do you call it, David? A fat guy touchdown? <laughs> Murphy, pick six. Stanford's up 12-3. What a play. How about Trent Murphy? and his intelligence, understanding all game long, Washington's been trying to throw the quick game to the perimeter of the field, slows down on his pass rush. You're gonna see him here at the top of the screen. Great job getting off of the cut block, and at six foot six, gets his hands up and picks that off. They call him the Yeti. Yeti rumbling in for a touchdown. The extra point is coming from Stanford. You want to talk about a demoralizing two plays for Washington. Barely stepping out of bounds was Marvin Hall, or they would have had a touchdown on the punt return. And on the first play after that from the scrimmage, Trent Murphy steps up and makes a play for number eight Stanford. There's Trent Murphy, who scored our only touchdown tonight, put Stanford up 13 to three. Time for our Aflac trivia question. Can you name the last three Heisman Trophy runners That's up? That's easy. I think it's only two names. Yep. Both from the, all three from the school. All two from the school. Well, all three runner up. What are we gonna do? 10, 09, 10, and 11. Marvin Hall brings it up. Give you the answer to the athletic trivia question after we check in with Chris Cotter. Thanks, Reese. Time for Sports Center right now, presented by Coors Light. Knuckleballer R.A. Dickey of the Mets won his 20th game this afternoon. The last knuckleballer to win 20 in a season, Joe Necro. 
for the 1980 Houston Astros. And Manny Acta was fired as manager of the Indians after almost three seasons this afternoon. Sandy Alomar Jr. named interim manager of the Tribe 21 and 50 since the All-Star break. Back to you, Reese. All right, Chris, so Keith Price, after throwing that interception returned by Trent Murphy for a touchdown, is back at it, and he's being chased again. And he throws it out of bounds. It'll be second and ten. Here's the answer to the athletic tribute question, and you guys all over this, as I'm sure most of our audience on the farm is. Last three Heisman Trophy runners-up. It'll be Gerhardt, 2009, runner-up to Mark Ingram, and Andrew Luck, runner-up to Cam Newton and RG3 last year. It's amazing because it speaks to the consistency of the Stanford program, able to absorb a lot of losses, not just these two players, losing head coach Jim Harbaugh, yet this team continues to win games, trying to change the perception that, that a lot of people have around the country, thinking this is a team that always overachieves, proving them wrong. Right the screen, Sankey has it. Bishop gets him into third and short before he's knocked down. And there couldn't be a worse situation for this offense that's handcuffed behind an offensive line that doesn't pass protect well to be put in a situation now where you're going to have to throw the ball off. I mean, it's been a struggle all night, and now it's going to get harder. And Keith Price, make no mistake about it, guys, is affected by all this pressure. You can see it in his Wouldn't body language. Would? Absolutely. <laughs> Ask Matt Barkley two weeks ago if he was not affected by the pressure from Stanford when he threw two awful interceptions in the middle of that game. I don't care if you're Joe Montana. When you get hit, it changes the way you play. Washington on the ground, and with that first down, they now equaled the number of punts they had. Eight first downs, eight punts. Keith Price has just been pummeled. And this isn't patty cake, guys. I mean, these are kill shots. You're seeing getting hit by three guys at the same time. You got Shane Scove in your, dr in your grill. You got Trent Murphy in your grill. You can't feel your right hand. I've been there before. Not a good feeling. And I'm telling you, it changes the way you think. The clock in your head starts going off quick. It's a bad place to be. Price pressure, down he goes. And having the football, Henry Anderson's coming out of there with the football. There are literally seven guys in this front seven of Stanford that can rush the passer. And I'll say it, guys, I think they're as good as any front seven in the SEC, including Alabama. And I would disagree. But I'll agree on this play. Good Lord, what is he supposed to do? I mean, what do you, hey, you want to step up in the pocket? Hey, come beat me. No, but here's the difference. I, I think they, they can be as physical, but they're not as athletic and fast in the trenches as the guys in the See, SEC. I think they're more athletic than you give them credit for. Okay, think, but they're, they're still not as fast as Montgomery and Mingo. They're not those type of athletes in the trenches. Yeah, but LSU doesn't have the linebackers they have. I'm saying front seven, not D-line, front seven. Williams is hit immediately. He's knocked down. Do I get do I get LSU's front eight because they're too deep on the defensive line? It's pretty dang yeah, yeah, solid. What about Holmes. the depth we're seeing tonight from Stanford too? We got guys with sacks as well. As you see the effect as it's had on Keith Price tonight, six hits and none of them were what I'd be called a light hit. They were all big time shots. And now you're right, Davey. He's going to have to play behind the gun, having to play catch up in the shotgun, throwing downfield. He's going to spend a lot of time in the ice tub in the whirlpool after this one. It's rid of it. They're still throwing it right on target. Now Williams needed to get across the 40-yard line for the first down. Got to turn up field to get that first down. And you got to run your route first of all to 11 yards. But defense has played well. You want to go for it? Fourth and one. I think you do. Yeah, I, I, well, yeah, what about you? Do you have an option play where you can get Keith Price on the perimeter of the field? And a pitch option somewhere. I mean, the most success they've had tonight running the football, guys, has been to the outside. Whether it's zone read, let's get Keith Price using his wheels a little bit, give him a chance. Third quarter. If he takes, if he takes his time, we can talk about the play. I'll get it off. First down for Washington. And into the open field goes Sankey on his way to the end zone. The third quarter comes to a close just like that. An offensive touchdown, and the Huskies are in it. We've already said Bishop Sankey doing a better job tonight being patient. They're going to bring the fullback in a little peel motion. Just seeing the crease, and when he does, puts his foot in the ground. He makes everybody miss. 
in the second level of that Stanford defense and hits a home run. And all of a sudden, Washington right back in this game. Sankey over 100 yards with that 61-yard run that almost doubled his total from the night. And we head to the fourth quarter. We've got a ball game at CenturyLink Field in Seattle. The Huskies had a turnover that went for six for Stanford, and then they answer on fourth down. Bishop Sankey. Bishop, I get promoted after that. College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. Starting the fourth quarter, Century Link Field in Seattle. Reese Davis, Jesse Palmer, David Pollock, Samantha Steele. Washington scored on the final snap of the third quarter. 61-yard touchdown run from Bishop Sankey. 13-10, the eighth-ranked team in the country getting a fight from the Huskies. And Stanford's Alex Carter will take a knee. They'll take it on the 25. Now, in that last snap of the third quarter, David, I thought Steve Sarkeesian on fourth down would zonary. take his time, Let's think get, about it, using his wheels a little bit. The ball. The ball. Yeah. Defense, quarter quarter the ball, maybe you relax a little bit because you don't think that they're going to run it. They're going to try to draw you off sides. Get up there, quick count it right away, punch it up in there, make two guys miss. Reservations for six, and we got a ball game. <laughs> the Bishop going in was not the starter to come in, and look at the impact that it had on the Washington sideline. Keith Price not jumping around because he's been battered by that Stanford defense. Price's team back in and after the fourth down conversion and the touchdown and Stanford seeing what kind of offense they can mount as we start the fourth quarter. A low throw towards Zach Ertz is incomplete second and ten as we check in with Chris Cotter. Reese, time for the Dr. Pepper 10 conference update. Tomorrow night, Hawaii goes at a conference when head coach Norm Chow brings his Warriors to Provo, where he spent 27 years as an assistant for BYU. The Cougs, meanwhile, look to break a two-game losing streak. Game kicks at 8 o'clock Eastern Friday on ESPN. Chris, during those 27 years that Norm Chow spent in Provo, Steve Sarkeesian, one of his most successful quarterbacks. Steve Sarkeesian's defense is flat out balling right now, third and long. And it, and it just kills him for that first down. Nunes has to hit your tight end, has to get four yards, has to make it more manageable so you have an opportunity to stay in third and short. He's keeping him, he's keeping him in bad positions by not hitting those easy throws underneath all night. And now as a defender, oh, it's go time. Getting the crowd involved, you're excited, pinning your ears back, coming after the quarterback. Stanford near the bottom of the country in third down conversion so far this year, and they're three for 13 tonight. Pressure coming. Stanford picks it up beautifully, and Nunes completes his pass. Again, it's Ertz, and with that grab, Ertz will have a career high in receiving yards. Be up around 80 yards. Well, this Stanford offensive line is doing a nice job giving Josh Nunes time to throw. That time, Washington blitzed three different linebackers, and there was a very clean pocket for Josh Nunes to look downfield. But still, would you say, Jesse, that the throw could have been better to allow Ertz to continue to run? Pick up Absolutely, yards no doubt about it. He needs to be more accurate right here. Let's get back to let's get back to pounding the ball down the ground now, right now. Exactly what they do. But Washington is up to the challenge. Taylor hit in the backfield. Andrew Hudson was the first guy. Hudson's had a good night on that defensive front. It's an undersized Washington defensive front. Andrew Hudson, only 249 pounds. He spends a lot of the night lining up inside against much bigger offensive linemen from Stanford. But tonight he had, you know, he's been involved in getting pressure on the quarterback, showing you his speed and athleticism getting outside. Tell you what, another five-yard loss, putting Stanford now behind the chains again. Nunes to Montgomery. Montgomery tries to make a guy miss, and 
Huskies have been sure tacklers. Marcus Peters getting the job done this time. It's interesting watching the ball come out of his hand. It doesn't come out with a lot of velocity, a lot of zip. It's almost, you know, you get to a point where it's almost like you're aiming. It seems like right now he's aiming the football and you know, trying so hard just to get some completions instead of just stepping in that thing and snapping it, Josh. I think right now, offensively, you have to expect pressure again. The last third down, Washington tried to blitz some extra defenders. We'll see if they bring pressure again, try to force a throw from Nunes. Not showing it yet. Rushing only four. Expected the screen. Did you see the Washington defensive line slam on the brakes? They knew the screen was coming. It was a good play call by Justin Wilcox, the defensive coordinator. I think Stanford was expecting pressure, and as a result, called the screen to try and gash it on the back end. You see here the defensive line slowing down the pass rush. What about the big gap inside? Even Danny Sheldon, all 320 pounds, would sniff that out. High short kick. Ball makes the catch just across the 30-yard line, and Washington will get it back after the 35-yard punt. ABC's Afternoon College Football presented by Buffalo Wild Wings on Saturday. College game day will be in East Lansing, Ohio State, and Michigan State. Braxton Miller has had a sensational start to the season for Urban Meyer's team. Le'Veon Bell. Likewise, for D'Antonio's squad, not a lot of balance for Michigan State so far. Though. Are they both about 80% of their offense so far? Yeah. I mean, which superstar gets down on Saturday is probably going to win. We're going to find out how good Urban Meyer's spread offense is in that game. Played against an elite defense. And Price had Bishop Sankey that was out there, but he just got rid of that thing as Ben Gardner was bringing the heat. Samantha Steele's down on the sideline. Yeah, Reese, I watched Keith Price that entire last drive. The exact demeanor that Sark wanted from him. Wouldn't sit down, got up in the faces of his O linemen, got them all up off the bench, said, guys, let's smile. We're going to win this. All smiles from Keith Price. Here's the difference between offense and defense. When the defense just came off the field there, the big message was no smiling, no laughing. <laughs> There's no laughing in football. You know, what I, you know what I noticed too, Sam, about Keith Price? He's walking better after Bishop Sankey had that long touchdown run. Yeah, it makes you feel better. <laughs> uh, Sankey's not going to get loose this time. Uswa Manum with the tackle. Here is Keith Price. Showing you that great leadership. Look at him going back over to his offensive line. Hey, I've been hit 95 times because of you guys, but I still love you. He needs to go thank his defense too while he's at it. And he does. That Washington defense has been lights out. They've held Stanford to 71 yards rushing, just barely over 200 yards of offense tonight. But a third and 12 now facing Price in the Husky offense. Price gets rid of it, throwing it out, and trying to get the ball to Austin Safari and Jenkins. They couldn't couldn't hook up Jordan Rogers delivering or Jordan uh, Richards I should say delivering the hit but I'm okay with that because he, he saw his man-to-man -man coverage on the outside you got your tight end that you have a good rapport with six foot six guy great athlete man-to-man -man coverage you like your matchup if you're gonna get him lined up on an inside linebacker you got to throw it up a little bit higher where you can get it but he got whacked as soon as the ball got there Not a very good punt Coons, Terrell with the fair catch, and Stanford will have it back. Three-point lead and trying to add to it. Keith Price and the Huskies trying to hang in. ESPN College Football available anytime, anywhere on your computer or mobile device via WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. Works great. Don't miss a thing. You gotta have it. Watch ESPN. Probably some people checking out our game from Seattle on the Watch ESPN app. And number eight, Stanford in a fight as we head toward the 10 minute mark remaining in the fourth quarter. Josh Nunes and the Cardinal with a three point lead in the ball back with their second best field position of the night from their own 36. Ty Montgomery. In and knocked down after a pickup of a couple. Thomas Totogi with the stop. And that's a good idea. I mean, you, you've brought in six offensive linemen. You brought in seven offensive linemen. You brought everything in tight and pounded it. And if you haven't had a lot of success, you spread it out, try to get it to Montgomery, pick up three or four or five yards. If I'm, good job, if, it up. If I'm Washington on defense, I'm loading the box and selling out because I'm winning all the one-on-ones. That's 
outside tonight. I'm dominating outside. Back to the ground. Devon Taylor has been surrounded by black jerseys virtually every time he's touched his night. Hard for us to find running. And, and I'm really surprised by how well Washington's playing. There are not a lot of defenses in the Pac-12 that are built to stop this physical Stanford offense. Ever since the emergence of Oregon in the last three years and their explosive offense, defenses across the conference have gotten a lot smaller and a lot faster. That generally plays into the hands of Stanford. Washington, much smaller, but they're making plays. And they're being physical. When was the last time Stephon Taylor broke a tackle and made something happen? Taylor's out right now. On third and five, pressure coming against Nunes, and he's hit. John Timu was there, and Timu is the guy who, in the last couple of games, had missed opportunities for sack. He didn't miss up an opportunity this time. And we're going to see John Timu playing the Mike lineback position right over the ball right here. Just going to come in on a delayed blitz. Nice job shooting the gap. Showing you that tremendous speed. Amazing athlete. He played quarterback, punter, kicker in high school as well. Safety. High and relatively short kick from Zekwinski. Hall goes up and catches at his own 35, and Washington trying to spring the upset. Now three. ESPN's College Football Primetime is served by Applebee's. Try the new Southwest Flavors 2 for $20 menu all season long. See you tomorrow. And in part by Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper, always one of a kind. Hop aboard that railway in Seattle and moving around unimpeded. The two offenses have been impeded plenty by the opposing defenses. Stanford holding on to a 13 10 lead. Washington just got the ball back. They've got it on their own 35 yard line. So technically, if you look at these numbers, nothing has to give because Stanford hasn't allowed a point in the fourth quarter this season, and the Huskies haven't scored one in the fourth quarter this season. Keith Price would like to change that with a battered offensive line. A lot of youngsters who've really been schooled tonight to try to find a way to score. Zone Reed looked. Bishop Sankey with a short carry. Now, Jesse, earlier in the game, you talked about how because of the injuries up front, Sarkeesian's handcuffed with his offensive play calling. What do they need to do to move it? This right here, they got to get spread, spread this defense out, and run the football and try to gash them running into the blitz. Similar to the pass that was intercepted, run back for a touchdown earlier. Jadon Mickens with a short game. But guys, Steve Sarkeesian is very handcuffed in this game because of the injuries and inexperience. He's limited in what he can call. The word only shows up a lot on that play sheet he's reading because there's only certain plays he can run in certain directions. And there's only plays that can be run with specific personnel groupings. Doesn't have a lot of answers on that play sheet, not as many as he normally has week in, week out. That last play, we saw the quick passing game out wide has been the best play tonight for him. Watch the tight end in motion here. The best play for Stanford, too, and they had to pick six. Firing it complete. Safari and Jink has made the catch. He's wanting the spot across that yellow line, <laughs> but it doesn't appear he's going to get it. Now, Washington scored its touchdown tonight on a fourth and one. And a 61-yard touchdown run. They're 56 yards away here. You're gonna see here the big tight end just working a stick route. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, spot. yeah. It's right on it. You know, Keith Price getting pumped up, trying to pump himself up. I think playing through pain. This is an offense, regardless, that's ready to go. They're lined up at the line of scrimmage. I actually think he was going. Thank God I didn't get hit. <laughs> Thank God I didn't get hit. <laughs> now, the last play of the third quarter. Washington quick snapped it. Well, I don't say quick snapped it, but you thought maybe they were going to let the quarter expire before running the fourth down play. This time, this time they wait, call the timeout. So it's fourth down. You're a little less than a yard. It's a short one. As I look across the way where the ball spotted, they need to get it up to the 45. Now, they're going to have a look at it and make sure that the spot is where it needs to be. If, if it is short, as I mentioned, they're, they're looking again, the officials are, the replay officials, looking up to see where the ball spotted, to see if Perry and Jenkins had the first down. I think we all thought that, that this was a good spot. 
His body's over it. I'm not sure yeah. the ball Right, ever yeah. his feet are behind where the yeah. first down line is, but it's where the football is when he goes down, and he, he actually falls backwards when he goes to the ground. Okay, let's just assume that this is short mm -hmm. then. Are you absolutely going for it here, down yes. three? Yes, no doubt. You're at midfield. Remember, you just mentioned it. You scored your touchdown on a similar situation. I'd go back to the one-back run, get Keith Price under center, and try to get to the perimeter of the field, get outside. You say that rather emphatically when your defense is played absolutely <laughs> lights out, and you could possibly, and you're playing against an offense that is very handcuffed and struggling, so you could pin them deep, which, deep, which you've done a pretty good job with all night, too. So I don't think it's that cut and dry. I'd be okay with either, but if you don't get it, you're pretty much in a, in a position where you're going to fail. If you don't get this fourth down and short, and you're stopped right there, you give Stanford the ball. I mean, with 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 Stanford's, with Stanford's pass rush tonight, guys, would you even attempt to throw here? I mean, remember they threw an inter a pick six. With my last fourth and short, no, I'm running the football. <laughs> no yeah. doubt. Goodness gracious, yeah. I'm take, averaging about take, 60 take, plus take yards page of play. After fourth down. After further video review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Fourth down. So the crowd's not going to like it, but I think that was the right Steve the right Sarkeesian, call. you see him flexing. That, that's usually a signal for big personnel grouping, so it does not look like they're going to spread no, the no, field. No. They're going to give that to David Shaw across to intimidate him across the field. Tell him I'm going? Yeah. Wow. It's Shaw's be, like, please. I'll tell you what, this front seven from Stanford will not be intimidated if they try to pound their head into, the, into a wall. We have a late substitution here from Washington. Oh, they're still okay. On the field. Fourth down. So play clock just now going. Wow. Theo Vatube has checked in the backfield. He's normally a linebacker. And they're sending Sankey in motion. And struggling ahead is Desden Petty. How about this? He picked up the first down. That's Petty who got it. Just simple fullback dive. And good for them. There are a lot of coaches around the country that never give the football to a fullback. Tom O'Brien being one of them at NC State. But it's a gutsy play call there from Steve Sarkeesian. Critical down. And Petty got just enough to move it. Sankey went in motion on the last play. He turns and gets the ball. Bishop into Stanford territory before he stopped by Terrence Brown. That's where they've been having their success on the ground in the second half. That was the exact same play call they scored their long touchdown on. Getting seal on the edge, getting outside the tackle box, picking up chunks of yardage at a time. How about it? You think it's a little roll reversal? You think they're starting to wear Stanford down a little bit? Mr. Palmer? It's directed at you, sir. I, I don't, I don't, you're looking over. I don't know if you're looking at Reese and Mickey. Reese, you have an you help me out. But I, I, I don't think they're wearing them down. More plays, more I think, yards. I think just execute. Just execute. Sankey driving and picking up the first down. I see a lot of missed tackles. That Stanford front I'm seven saying, you were talking I'm about up execution. there a little while ago. Oh, this, is, this is easily one of the best front sevens in the entire country. It comes down to execution right here. One Getting hand. in the backfield is Ben Gardner. You got to wrap up, make that play. I will say that that play might have been as well blocked as any running play we've seen all night. At least nobody's running free into the backfield as we've seen so often. Price in the backfield. Now he's hit as he throws. Shane Scove was hoping to get a shot at picking that one off. Bruce Wild and Manum is there, there to get a hand on Price's arm. Keith Price saw an opportunity to go downfield. He killed that play of the line of scrimmage, audibling for a big opportunity downfield, but a Manum, too much speed off the edge. Yeah, he had a chance. You could hear him. He said, kill, kill, yeah. kill. They were running the football. He checks to try to take a shot down the field. David, they didn't look too gassed on, on that pressure. Stanford front seven game. They were pretty good by surpassing it, had it? Second and ten. He's out quickly to Casey Williams. Williams stopped at the 36. Needs to get to the 33 for the first down. They'll be about three yards short. And again, it's, it's been really successful. And your kicker, Travis Coons, you got a lot of faith in him. He's done well tonight. He already made his career long. That's pretty solid. But the quick passing game for Washington 
trying to get their guys in the isolated out space on the outside has been their best offense. I, I think to give them a real chance to tie in this game, you got to get five more yards, get this football to the 30 yard line somehow. Again, quickly to Williams. Williams, free, running down the sidelines. Caught from behind, but he will not be stopped before he scores. Touchdown, Huskies. The first points of the season in the fourth quarter for Washington, and they come with less than five minutes to go in the game, and they give the Huskies a lead on the number eight team in the country. If the play stands. Terry Layden is going to have a look at it. Could be looking at a couple of things. First, let's see if he stayed in bounds. I haven't gotten word exactly what they're looking for. Seems to be plenty of room there. Now, the ball did come free at the end, but the official immediately signaled touchdown. No, oh, he's yep. in. I he's think in. he's in. He, he, the ball crosses the plane by the time it comes out. That's going to be a touchdown. Definitely stayed in bounds. Guys, I am shocked right now that Stanford defensively is giving so much cushion to these wide receivers. I mean, you've been winning outside. You understand that they're going to throw quick. The ball's coming out of their quarterback's hands fast. Why aren't you pressing them at the line of scrimmage? Well, especially to... That's a touchdown. Field is touchdown. As we expected. We, we saw USC play Stanford two weeks ago and get dominated up front. You've seen Stanford dominate up front. I think Washington's done a better job of getting the ball out of their quarterback's hands. They've done a better job of sticking to the run late in the ball game here and to give themselves a chance offensively. Extra point is good, and it's very important because with less than five minutes to go, Stanford needs a touchdown to go ahead. 17-13, number eight in a world of trouble on the road. Crowd estimated around 55,000. Been hungry for this for Washington. They're going to LSU and getting hammered. Decimated by injuries. And now, four minutes and 53 seconds remaining. And after Casey Williams' touchdown, the Huskies up on number eight Stanford. Ty Montgomery returning to kickoff. Montgomery has great speed. He'll get it up close to the 35-yard line, and that's where the Cardinal will put it in play. This game might very well be a warning for Florida State. Number four coming off a big win, going on the road to South Florida, 6 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN Saturday night. That will be followed by number one Alabama hosting Ole Miss, 9.15 Eastern. Doubleheader, two of the top four teams in the country on ESPN in primetime Saturday. Now, what do you see from Josh Nunes well, here? He's going to have to make a throw now. This is an offense that had to do a better job running the football earlier in the game, but now they're behind late. Nunes has missed a lot of wide open receivers. He's going to have to make a big time throw somewhere on this drive. Trying it on first down, looking for Zach Ertz, and he makes a big time throw. Ertz out close to midfield. Those two hooked up for what turned out to be the game-winning touchdown against USC. And this is an opportunity for Josh Nunes to show that he is capable of doing this great job. I'll tell you what, there's not a lot of separate, uh, separation on the outside. I mean, you got to give Washington secondary a lot of credit playing tough defense. He's going to have to thread some needles here and not just be a game manager, which he's had to do several times throughout the first couple weeks of the season. Nunes firing, and again, it's Ertz. And you're ruling it incomplete. Ertz close to 100 yards receiving. He's got a career high tonight. And if I'm Washington, I don't get conservative. I don't get passive. What's gotten me to this point is I've been hyper aggressive. I've been showing looks coming out. I've been showing not woods and woods. They got to continue to mix things up up front. Nunes underneath to Ertz again. Ertz going to pick up nine. 
We're seeing right now offensive coordinator Pep Hamilton calling pass plays designed to go to their best wide receiver, and that's Zach Ertz. Three plays in a row right now. Our own Todd McShay has Zach Ertz rated as the number one NFL prospect at tight end in next year's draft. Right now, they're using him and making use of him. And that's where Josh Nunes has to have his eyes each and every play. Ertz is a big target. They're going to bring the chains out to see if Ertz got enough for the first down. That's to the chagrin of the Husky crowd. And guys, if you're Washington on defense, Josh Nunes still hasn't done enough to make you respect his ability to throw the football. So close the middle of the field yep. with a safety. Play man-to-man -man coverage and make Josh Nunes make an outstanding play to beat you at this point. Because he hasn't done it yet. No short, he's third and one. Cardinal just inside the Husky 42. David Shaw has lost just two games in his head coaching career at Stanford. On the road is the eighth-ranked team in the country. Husky's alive. Out of beef. The ball was put on the ground and Ryan Hewitt ended up with it, and that wow. was almost disaster wow. for the Cardinal. You know, you, you got to be careful as a quarterback. In short yardage goal line situations, you have to stomach the football once you get it from the center. Yeah, John Timo is saying it's his ball, but uh, Terry Layden is saying that it's not. And Terry Layden's opinion at the moment is the only one that counts. You know, he's got two fullbacks really close to him coming right up the ball. You see he sticks the football out too early, and it's the up back that actually knocks that out of his hands. You got to do a better job with your fundamentals as a quarterback down tight. Tell me the ball. Hey, great job by Hewitt picking that thing up. Yeah, that first down. Zach Ertz lined up in the slot right now. At the top play of the screen. Right on top of him. Oh, he got Flag the flies. Wow. And David Shaw is incredulous. David Shaw wanted a new play clock. He wanted a new play clock. Yeah. That did seem fast, didn't it? Of course. Delay of game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Yet again, we talked about crowd noise early in this game and how Josh Nunes and this offense would have to do a good job communicating in a hostile environment. That's the fourth time tonight they've had a major issue, and now they're having them at the most critical juncture of the game. We just saw upset alert. It's trending on Twitter. And we head toward the three-minute mark, number eight, down four, first and 15. Josh Nunes taking a deep shot. Got a man out there, and it is off the fingertips again of Ty Montgomery. How many, how many times has that Montgomery is the had an opportunity third tonight? Time tonight? They've taken a shot at Ty Montgomery on the outside, and they haven't come up with it. And guys, every throw was catchable. That's a catchable ball. You got to run through that. Ty Montgomery sticks his hands out, I think, too early here. Just run through the football, and now you're in the end zone celebrating with your teammates. I'll tell you, Josh Look Nunes has done a very good job with his deep ball tonight. He really has. Well, and now it puts you in a situation, too, where it's second and 15. You know, I, now it makes it even harder on your offense. Now, Huskies have a, have a guy down in the end zone. That's, that's what it looks like. You know, self-inflicted wounds again, guys. Not getting a play called in time having a delay a game. And you get a great shot downfield against press coverage with your most explosive receiver, and you can't come up with it. Marcus Peters was the guy for the Huskies who was down. Stanford trying to save itself down four late. Three years ago, in Steve Sarkeesian's first year, Washington beat number three USC 16 to 13. Since then, the Huskies have lost four straight against top 10 opponents. They've got Stanford on the ropes now. Two minutes and 50 seconds to play. Sarkeesian's team up 17-13. Josh Nunes and the Cardinal looking at second and 15. Nunes hit from behind, gets rid of it to Stephon Taylor. 
And a host of Huskies there to wrap him up and pick up a four, maybe five. It's going to be third and long as we go down toward two and a half minutes to play. It's a lot easier to generate a pass rush as a defense when you know the offense is going to throw the football. And right now, Stanford, very predictable. Look at the speed rush coming off the edge. And there's Josh Shirley again, doing a nice job coming around the play, forcing a throw up by Josh Newton. And look at the Huskies hunting in packs, too, man. I mean, they're, you see four or five guys at the ball every single time. Ravine sure. Toey Lolo and tight end lined up against Desmond Trufant at the bottom of the screen, their best corner. Plenty of time for Nunes. Firing it on the inside in the middle. And Montgomery made the catch. He's short of the first down. Ties out of two or three go off his hands tonight. But now they're ruling it incomplete. Yeah. Looks I think like they it. are. They're going I didn't, back. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't think he made that catch. The pass was ruled incomplete. Please place two minutes on the game clock. Two minutes. The clock will start on the snap. The Washington sideline is alive. It has been a difficult night for Montgomery as he couldn't hang on to that pass. Now. I, I don't know. I, <laughs> what do you think I didn't really that? see the ball come Rolling loose there. incomplete pass on the previous play is under further review. They're going to have another look at him. It's he's in his body there. He's got two hands he's on it, it now. His knees are going to touch right now. Elbow he, touches Yeah, too. that should be a catch. That's a catch. That's a catch. And that's going to set up, if it's if it's overturned, that's going to set up about a fourth and four. Big difference. Yeah. Fourth and four, fourth and ten. Yeah, that's a catch. That should easily be a catch. Wow. Montgomery. Sir, you needed to make that catch. Yeah, you did. Make amends. But you, but you know what? You're starting to see, too, one of the deficiencies in Stanford's offense. Playmakers on the outside. You know, we talk about the tight ends a lot, and Ertz is a really good player. Tulolo's a really good player. They need to find some receivers on the outside that can make some plays for them. That was one of the, I think, remarkable things about their offense and how efficient it was with Andrew Luck at quarterback Without and certainly De yeah. De DeCastro up front. They didn't have they didn't have those guys when luck was here either and you know Nunes is a young guy He's got some talent. He's had a rough night tonight But and, and in fairness know, to him his stats could look a lot better absolutely some, some yeah, guys would have made some plays no, question, no doubt All right. Well, let's just assume this thing gets overturned. And it's fourth and four What are you running? Well, I, I, I'm going back to where, where my best players are and that's tight end It's got to be over the middle of the ball somewhere against a much smaller linebacker or a much smaller safety. Windows aren't going to be big to throw into. Your best players are going to have to make a play. And, and, and Washington has done a great job bringing pressure, making Nunes feel uncomfortable. I definitely, I definitely heat him up, man. I heat him up, I jam the receivers on the outside yeah. and make him make a play. I'm still having a look at it. it's a very important decision obviously we play official with Jim Fogeltance I mean, if it ends up staying fourth and 11 or fourth and After 10 for the review it was determined that the ball was caught this is a complete pass inbound fourth down for Stanford the ball will be at the 34 and a half yard line uh, replay officials have done yeah, a good job yeah, tonight they have, they sure have all right so you know, you know, Tui Lolo's on the field, Ertz is on the field. As a defense, you have to understand the football's coming to one of them right now, top of screen. You've got a six foot eight tight end lined up one on one against a much smaller corner. Remember, they threw a long completion to him earlier in this game on a jump ball. Stanford's hope for an undefeated season might ride on this play, or at least remaining undefeated up to this point. Fourth down, the jump ball throw is. Toy Lolo is intercepted. Desmond Trufant. The jubilation on the Husky sideline, a minute 46 away from knocking off number eight. All night long, Desmond Trufant has been on an island. It's been Trufant Island. And he's won every matchup he's faced. He gives up six or eight inches to Levine Toilolo here. 
I think Toby Lolo misplays the ball. It uh, slows no, down. No, no. It doesn't help the quarterback. I think that's a bad pass. Yeah. I think you. Well, you've I, got I, a I six, think you could also run through it. You've but, got a six foot eight receiver. You hang the ball up in the air a little bit and let him go over top of it. But a great job staying on top of the route by Tufan. But the ball could have hung up a little higher. By 46 wow. to go. Stanford has a couple of timeouts left. By the way, among the cornerback playing Trufant brothers, Marcus from the Seahawks, Isaiah with the Jets, first Trufant interception of the year. Guys, Ooh, nice nugget. Look at that. Guys, what about what about the parity inside the Pac-12 right now? What's going on with, with teams top to bottom? As we go back and take another look at this interception by Trufant, I mean, it's a complete don't, size mismatch. You have to hang it up, don't you? I, th I think Toby Lolo slows down. I think it could be a better throw. You'd actually rather underthrow that than overthrow it. But Toby over Lolo also stopped a little bit on the route. Still a buck 42 to go. But how about the turnaround for the Washington defense now under Justin Wilcox from a year ago? And I understand Stanford's a little bit different. Gashed for 400 plus on the ground, gave up 65 points, completely embarrassed. Now they've held Stanford at 13 points. I think all the SEC fans are going, you got an SEC D coordinator, huh? Things changed around. So is Boise State. They're saying the same thing. But now Boise State. They're they're Oregon they're, because he played at Oregon, too. But there's a there's something guy. to be said for being in the right position, in the right place, and not beating yourself. Well, Washington did that a lot last yeah. year. How about the stability and what Steve Sarkeesian has brought to this program now. And I think what's most different about this team today than when Steve Sarkeesian got here is the type of players he's been able to recruit. When you look out here, you look at true freshmen like Shaq Thompson. I mean, that's yeah. how big time defense a true freshman are supposed to look like. That's what your starters are supposed to look like. They've had four straight top 25 recruiting classes. He's brought in better athletes to give them a chance to compete with some of the best teams in the country like they are tonight. But this thing's not over yet. 99 yeah. seconds remain. Stanford has to get a stop here. They just used their last timeout. Got a third down play. Need to get it out to the 18 for a first down. Stanford has to stop them. Then obviously Washington will let the clock run down as much as they can and punt it away and try to hang on one more time. Obviously what they would prefer is to get the first down. Washington trying to salt it away. And jumping into the neutral zone is Ben Gardner. Wow. Offside. Number 49 of the defense by contact. Five yard penalty. Results in the first down. The all Pac 12 defensive lineman from a year ago, and he knew just, just too anxious to try to make the play. Stanford has only had five penalties on the day. As you see Steve Sarkeesian celebrating because he knows it's ball game. But guys, every penalty they've committed has been a backbreaker, whether it was a delay of game penalty, oh, offsides. Uh, the flags, flags flying. As Washington's eager to get that clock running, try to get out of here with an upset. That's a bad feeling as a defensive lineman. Great Substitution infraction. 12 players on the offense. This is a dead ball foul. Would be first down. Five-yard penalty, please reset the clock to one minute, 39 seconds. Now, here's where, as we make the tie to the NFL again, here's where the Greg Schiano rules yeah. come in to try, because obviously Washington's going to just try yeah, to it's, run it's, out it's the ball, clock. It's ball game. I mean, they, they, they could line up in victory formation, which they're doing right now. After Keith Price, you're just going to let the clock bleed. Wow. Isn't it, isn't it time for what Washington has next on the schedule? Yeah. Well, take, a, take, take a look at the stretch. I mean, this is one of the worst stretches that I can remember any college team ever having to go through. So LSU was up here. There's a number three beside that number. Coming up now, you got Oregon, you got USC at home, you got an Arizona team that can score. How about the surprise team of the year maybe in Oregon State, guys? They've been really good, a very small sample size with them, only a couple of games played. You guys were surprised by the Beavers. We go inside a minute to go before the Huskies will come up with this upset, and our Wrangler five-star player of the game made the game-saving play. 
Desmond Trufant had the big interception to stop the fourth down attempt from Stanford. He broke up a couple of passes. He was part of a Husky defense that was relentless and tough and held Stanford to 65 rushing yards and no offensive touchdowns in the game. The reason, a big reason why they were able to hold Stanford to only that many rushing yards is because of him. Absolutely. Because he plays on an island, you can sacrifice an extra defender in the box to shut down Stanford running. And that one is going to wrap it up. For the first time in three years, Washington has beaten a top 10 team. And Stanford, who came into this game ranked eighth in America, they will bow down to Washington as the Huskies spring the upset and the students are rushing the field. They called it the blackout of the century and they landed the knockout on Stanford. Sports Center is just around the corner. Some unexpected drama in Baltimore. There's an American League strikeout record in Detroit, and maybe the catch of the year in baseball. Another upset in college football. Sports Center's coming now.